Testing. Okay, this time I didn't actually forget to unmute. For some reason, Windows decided to def default to something that was not this microphone. So we're getting better at this. We're getting more and more varied um, failure modes. That's probably a sign that I've been doing this for too long. Oh boy. So yes, uh, the stream is at 6 a.m. because this week has been a complete and total dumpster fire. Um, like, more so than usual because um, if you've... Anyone who's a content creator who's on Twitter has been feeling this one. Uh, video is hella delayed. How... How bad? Uh, I don't think it's that bad I'm looking at it. Video is a full second behind the sound. Are we really doing this again? I thought I had this problem fixed. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's a full second behind the sound. Uh, yeah, hold on. I have to put the delay back in. Yeah, this is a problem that we haven't completely managed to solve. I am going to have to host a stream where I just deal with it, but every time I set up the stream the latency goes completely crazy. All right, so anyway, we are doing the P Windows uh, Postix subsystem, uh, sorry, the Windows Postix subsystem. And um, this is actually going to be an edited video, I'm hoping. Ah, uh, that's the dream. I did a lot of research on this a few weeks ago, um, and I wrote it up as a set of Twitter threads, which, if you've seen my Twitter, is no longer a thing, since I've locked my account, and with certain folks coming, audio gain is too high. Alright, let's turn the gain down a little bit. Yeah, I do have incense going, nothing's actually burning. Um, I just... So, by and large, here, here's the short version. Um... I was getting ready to start doing a video on the POSIX subsystem. Then Elon Musk, uh, Elon Musk uh, bought Twitter, and it has all gone very, very badly. So the POSIX subsystem has been something of a fascinating nightmare for those who understand it. POSIX is basically, um, it's sort of like the generic Unix interface Almost every operating system besides Windows has it, and it was required for government contracts. So what Microsoft did, and this is actually out of the Windows NT resource guide, they implemented the absolute bare minimum needed, which is basically a handful of programming tools, and did not implement the rest. Although apparently they did support ADA language bindings for POSIX, as well as Fortran, although I have no idea how you would even use them. So this is directly out of the Windows NT 3.1 reference guide. And the um, the thread goes on for quite a while. This is actually 64 pages of notes that are just Twitter. Um, let, me, let me drop the mic volume just a little bit more. I'm not surprised it's cl clipping a little bit. Um, I did actually get this working. Like, if we go way, way down, like, like I actually have some, I even got Vi working at one point, which um, was not trivial. Uh, I had to do some incredible um, shenanigans to get Vi working. Um, like, if we scroll down a bit further, and I actually am going to have to figure out where I got this, because I'm going to need to type it in again. Uh, but yes, I did actually get Vi working. That's about as complex as an application as you can get. Uh, it it goes downhill from here. Now, I did this on NT3.1. Why is this clipping? Hold on. Filters. I don't have a filter on the audio. I just dropped it down Can. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. All right, so that's synced. 
Uh, Windows sound panel. Is it still clipping in here? Is this where it's doing that? Recording? Testing what? Yep, yeah, that's what's doing it. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, okay. Uh, for some reason, Windows completely lost my sound device. That should resolve it. Uh, video is still, audio is still ahead of the interface. Let's see here. Uh, filters. Let me disable the sync there, and then let me see your device timestamps do not use. Like, I'm not using the capture card. Oh, hold on. Let's see if that resolves the issue, because now I see the bars moving in. Yeah, I think I've got fixed. I Like I said, there's a problem with this interface on this machine. But, I mean, I couldn't even get a configure script to run. And I tried. Like, I I really tried. A lot of it is because there's a lot of missing functionality. And uh, I can't actually click on that. But, like, I don't have the TR command. I, just even getting SH to work, that's fine. I have an incense stick burning behind me. So, that's why there's smoke. Um... Newsy, there is actually an AS and an LD. Um, it's not the end of the world. There's just a lot of other things. Um, so, our goal for this stream is... I am going to have someone that has done... Uh, I'm not going to name them, so people... Um, but someone who has helped me with video content creator. I am actually... I just have to hit the start recording button. It's a good thing I did that. Um, we are basically going to do a live stream. I'm going to set up a full NT4 development environment. Um, we are going to set up the POSIX environment. And then we're just going to try and do something useful with it. Um, my notes more or less dictate how this is going to go. I am going to use NT4 and not NT3.1. Um, because the compiler is a little less horrible. Um, and getting NT3.1 to work is... Oh, good lord, that is a pain. Like, NT3.1 on a good day is bad. Um, trying to do development work on 3.1. Oh, man, that that is just miserable. So we're going to use NT4 for this. There is no significant differences between the two besides the amount of sanity I am actually going to save. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I find it funny that it's showing up. It's mostly because I have the the lamp going so you can see all the smoke. But honestly, doing a live stream today is my coping mechanism for what has been probably one of the worst weeks I've had to deal with in ages. Um, for those who don't know, we've been setting up a Fetty instance for the community. Um, my... The link should be in the description if I didn't forget to put it there. Um, setting up Fetty is an absolute miserable thing to do. I just filed paperwork to also do incorporation. Um, something that had to be done, but um, is just really annoying. So it's been a lot of, I have absolutely no spare cycles in my life at the moment. I made a little bit of time to do this so I could record all the, the footage and um, honestly make a difference for people. Um, but because I have sleep disorder life, I was either going to do the stream at 6 a.m. or it wasn't going to happen. So, end commander at 6 a.m. is now a thing. And I will be streaming again sometime this week. The next one will be a charity stream. This is not for charity, um, although I really would appreciate any coffee, super chats, or Patreon subscribers. I mean, the uh, the fact of the matter is that Twitter going down in flames is a bad thing for basically every content creator. Uh, it's honestly, I'll be surprised if it stays up this weekend because of the World Cup. I could be wrong about that. Um, but there's a lot of content creators that depend on Twitter. I am lucky I do not, although losing Twitter is going to be a major blow. So I've been doing what I can to soften it, making sure I've got everyone's contact information. Uh, the server utils the analytics on my Discord server look like a straight line going up because everyone is getting off the platform. So it's it's been rough. 
Uh, I also have I had all the work that I still have to do on Soylent News. Um, the last stream is currently unlisted. You can find the URL um, if you know if you look for it. But I left it unlisted just because I still have a lot of security hardening to do. I've got enough that I'm at least sleeping at night again. But I figured I'm not going to post that VOD until I've got it, everything I need done with it. So the next Soylent News stream will also be a charity stream where, where we are going to try and get a legacy mod Pearl application to work in Docker. And then I had the apps. Yeah, it's in the playlist. Just having it unlisted, though, means that YouTube will not put it in recommends, which is what I'm avoiding. Like, I don't mind people looking at it. I just don't want... It being recommended to people until I've got more work done on it so right now what we're doing is we are installing NT4 server this is actually the physical copy I own um, I was actually curious to see what the viewer turnout was going to be because like I could be streaming at 10 p.m. at night and I'm still going to, on a weekday and I'll still get up to 60 so I was curious if we could actually get good turnout at this time period because if i really don't need to keep daylight hours i can stream a lot more often than i do um and honestly i'm okay with that because realistically speaking i without having editors make content for me i am not going to have the time to do it myself i i've been deep in a job hunt I'm not really expecting to have free time again until January at the earliest. So we are by and large, it's just going to be live streams on the channel or um, end commander in real time where I will write a script. I will record it, but someone else is going to edit it for me because editing by far is the largest time sink in making content creation. So... Um, I am going to be streaming more often. I did have the interview on Wednesday. I'm not going to go into details about it, but what I will say is that interviews go two ways. And I decided after that interview that that was not a company I wanted to work for. So that is the long and short of it. So right now we're just going to be installing NT4. We then just need to install the service pack, but uh, we're just kind of, you know, chillaxing here. So, and we need to be on NTFS. This is actually very important. The POSIX subsystem only runs on Windows NT. It only, well, it only runs on NT. Um, we don't need an exhaustive examination. If my virtual hard drive has broken sector, something has gone horribly wrong. Um, you have to be on NTFS and you have to set some advanced options that we will do after we get the system installed. We also are going to need to install service pack three and we're not going to do it on this stream, but maybe in a later one, we will actually play with the OS2 subsystem. Windows NT was ran with the intention that it could run multiple types of operating system binaries. Out of the box, it will support Windows 16 binaries through NTVDM, 32-bit console applications, 32-bit graphical applications, POSIX applications, and on x86, it will also support um, OS2 text mode applications, and with an add-on package, that with an add-on package, it will also support graphical. Uh, pointing devices uh, setup creates a fat partition because of RISC platforms. On RISC platforms, it has to boot from FAT32 or from FAT16 uh, because the arc loader cannot deal with NTFS. So that's why it's like that. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's rather like I when I was looking into this in depth, it's rather impressive on how bad this is. I'd actually called this unfit for purpose. And had anyone really been raising a stink about it in 93, I wouldn't been surprised if there was antitrust over this. I mean, Microsoft got sued and lost over the Microsoft bundling. But it was that lawsuit was a lot about anti-competitiveness in general, uh, even though the main case of it was um, dealing with uh, Microsoft. Well, it, it was Microsoft v. Um, the United States and it dealt with 
the consent decree made with the FTC. I've really been surprised that none of the Unix vendors ever complained about the POS6 implementation in NT when Microsoft went to bid for government contracts, but by and large, they were not super large into that space until the release of Active Directory some years later. Uh, what's wrong with the mic? Is it not loud enough? Like, what's... Let's see here. Uh, I don't know anything about Sarandia OS. I've never used it. So, all right, let me eject. It's too loud. All right, I'll drop it a little bit, and I'll keep an. I'm making sure I'm keeping an eye on the panel. Yeah, I don't know why Windows has decided that today will be the day that my entire streaming setup is going to break, but you know, it's kind of part of the course for an end commander stream. All right, uh, I can lower it a bit more. Um, let's see here. Recording sounds, levels, balance. Yeah, let me lower this down to about 68. All right. So now this is doing the NTFS conversion. Uh, and then we'll get into the second stage. What I may do for a follow-up to the stream, it will not be today, is we might actually install NT on MIPS and try this as well. So there's that. Okay. Um, this has no relation to Windows services for Linux, a uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. The closest ancestor to it is Windows subsystem for Unix, which was an add-on. It, it was available for 2000, but it wasn't included in the box until XP. And I don't actually think it was there originally on XP. I think it was maybe Service Pack 2 when they finally added it. Like, it was not there originally, but this is incredibly bad and incredibly broken. Um, I'm keeping an eye on... I've got the volume levels up, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Okay, so I sound distorted, but mic gain. That might be a problem at the interface. Let me... Hold on. Grab the interface. Are we... We're not boosted at the interface, but I, it was on the floor because it fell off my desk. Okay. I mean, I have an N see, I have an NT Power PC machine, or I have a prep one. It starts. I haven't found a graphics card that works with it yet. I I have to hunt on eBay. I like I said, I've had absolutely no free time. Like, this is the first thing I've done that I've actually wanted to do in since um uh since the last stream really and even then working on silent news was kind of i need to do this not a um not a i really want to do this so let's just call this POSIX dev for the network and i'm not going to set i'm just going to set up as a standalone well, let me put an empty... Wow, it will actually let me put an empty password in. And then let's just install everything. Okay. Uh, it's going to install NT Networking. It should see a network card in there. I hope. If not, I'm going to have some fun transferring files in. Yeah, this, this machine will... We can install ISS. Start search. I don't actually remember what network card I put in this thing. Uh, we might have to do that after setup. What network card did I put in? I didn't put one in. Okay, well that explains it. Uh, Alright, so we are not going to actually connect to a network right now. We'll do it after we finish installing. Okay. Uh, well, the thing is that Sigwin has to do a giant pile of hacks to actually do anything. Um, Sigwin has to emulate Fork on top of Win32, which has no concept of Fork. And if you ever want to see horror, look at how it's done. Hey, hi Luna, how are you doing today? So, yeah, um, the biggest difference between NT4 and Windows 2000 was the, introdu the introduction of Active Directory. Um... So it's definitely, um, 
an improvement or, or it 2000 was an improvement but active directory was very rough in its initial versions most sites that i saw back in the day stayed on nt4 and then didn't really upgrade until uh windows 2003 part of the problem is that you to upgrade a windows nt domain you had to upgrade in place on the on the primary domain controller like there was no way around that that was one of the that was probably the absolute worst upgrade microsoft has ever made you do i remember the best way to do it is you would create a new backup domain controller you would fail over the primary to that new backup and then you would do the upgrade and that was how we did it at one business uh there was a few other quality of life improvements in 2000 um it had n i e5 and uh luna it i really hope you f feel better i mean the i very much appreciate how fucking crap this entire week has been like this this is my little bit of relaxation so there's that um i've had so many problems with virtual box with the virtual box 7 that i just gave up trying to use it i uh i do i actually don't think i've rebooted since the last stream so i don't think i have hyper v properly installed as of yet but um i mean it is what it is so it it it's just frustrating i um when i have to do a more serious project i'll probably get it sorted out i just don't want to deal with it as of right now um and for running nt4 you're better off you doing full system emulation than not um i've been pretty unimpressed with wsl2 versus one although i understand why microsoft did that like um I, I've really found a lot of sharp edges, especially relating to networking, that just kind of sucks all around. Okay, so that's NT setup. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is install Service Pack 6, because um, NT rather desperately needs it, and it is hot enough in here that I don't want to be wearing a, a shirt. Like, we've gone from like 60 degree weather to it is literally 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius today in New Jersey. Um, this is the coldest day we've had in quite a while. So it has been wonderfully miserable, like absolutely, absolutely miserable. So, okay, so let's let this save config. Um, what I'm thinking we're going to have to do is, um, what I'm thinking we're going to do, so to, to actually use the POSIX subsystem, you need the Windows NT resource kit, which I, you know what, I really hope I have that on my NAS. Let me look for that now. I'm pretty sure I have it on my NAS uh, because I'm pretty good at copying stuff from the laptop to the NAS. Uh, if not, I'm going to be speed downloading a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see here, Microsoft uh nt4 workstation resource kit we also need the driver de not the driver development kit i need the um i need the sdk which i knew i had at one point what did i do with it because my um my dev fol my folders can be a little bit scary uh is the word i'm looking for I've got the Windows 2000 platform kit. Uh, okay, NT4 95 SDK 1996. Okay, I do have it. Okay, that helps. Um, POSIX for Windows is basically... Yeah, you could basically say it's SIGWIN, but nothing actually works. It only supports 110 system calls. There's no networking support. There's no IPC support. There's no support for um, sharing data with Windows. Uh, it can share files, and that's about it. Like, that is completely, completely it. Okay. 
So, um, I am rather desperately hoping that this is not going to be a pain in the butt. All right, let's just log in as an administrator. So I put a 3D Verge card in here on the hope that Windows NT would be able to work with it. I might have been overly optimistic about that. All right, display type, 3D adapter. Because uh, NT3 is pretty picky about what it will work with. But I remember having pretty good luck with this car, this driver back in the day. All right, so let's close and then we have to restart because this was in the era where every system change required a restart. Well, I mean, there was plenty of joke keyboards where like you would have um, all three keys in a tiny little bit and then it would work. All right, so we have OS loader starting up. Wow, we are up to 128 this morning already? Maybe I should just stream more early in the morning because apparently that's when everyone's on YouTube. So, um, so Vel, that's how the official compiler works. Like, I'm not even joking. That is actually how cc.exe works. It uses a scratch file to transfer commands from the POSIX side to the Windows side to invoke CL. It is the most cursed and possessed thing that I have dealt with in a while. Let's see, how's, how do I feel about this resolution? I think this resolution feels good. Uh, I probably need to adjust OBS. Yeah, I do. So hold on, let me take you out of studio mode. Uh, video capture. Yeah, hold on. Let's just make you smaller. Uh, yeah, you know what? That works. That works. Okay, cool. Because I can actually read that on my screen. If I open a terminal, as long as I turn the font up, that should look fine on stream. Like, if I go 10 by 18, like that. Yeah, okay, that shows up quite nicely. That shows up quite nicely on stream, so I think that works. So I think the next thing I gotta do at this point is we need to install a networking card. I don't know if we're actually going to use it, but I wanna have it. So, um, and then while we do that, I gotta wait for this to go back down to shut down. Okay, uh, so let me go to set. So you're not gonna be able to see me do this part, but um, what do I want to install? I think I'm just going to grab a basic any 2000 on IRQ10. That's going to do a reset, and then we can install that. Unfortunately, it's not really going to be able to talk to anything, but I could probably like use HTTP, uh, Python HTTP server to easily copy files in and out, which will make things a lot easier. Yeah, we're going to upgrade to Service Pack 6. Um... No ACPI. Windows NT4 predates ACPI. By a few years, I would say, 2000 was the first one that had any support for it. But um, NT4 came out in 96. And I want to say ACPI first came out in 90. It may have also came out in 96, but it was not common. This was the era of APM. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is we have to install Service Pack. Um, technically speaking, uh, this is the back office edition of NT. This is not the regular one. It's not really that different because it's a Service Pack 1 release, but, and I can install a whole bunch of add-on software if I wanted. Now, where did I put all the Service Packs? I have a folder where I keep them. But the problem is I don't always remember where I put them. Uh, it's usually, it's in Microsoft. Uh, here, come on, service packs. Because we do, we really do need the service pack, but the problem is I don't remember where I put them. Uh, let's see here, that's a whole bunch of just random disks. Oh, here it is, NT service packs. 
Ah, Windows NT high encryption. That's what we need. That This was annoying to find because there's multiple versions of this service pack. And not all of them will install of all versions. Uh, VODs will be pub a VOD will be published after the stream goes live. Um, so, um, I do get analytics. It's not very useful with streams. I only get analytics for the VOD as far as I can tell. So, um, there's that. I don't think I've ever seen NT4 turn itself off. There is an APM call to do it, but it requires a 32-bit APM implementation. Almost all APM implementations were 16-bit. Like, it was rare that you would have a 32-bit one. So, I'm not completely certain that it's ever that I've ever seen it be used. Yeah. Yeah. Well, terminal servers uh, server edition is a modified version of the code. the The really weird one is NT4 Enterprise Edition because it can use a it can actually use 36 bit addressing and supports um uh it supports 64 gig not 64 um 16 gigabytes of memory. It can actually exceed the four gigabyte mark on very specific hardware. I've never seen it. It uses segmentation in protected mode to do that. So it does It does exist. Um, maybe we'll look at it on a stream. I don't think there's anything very unique in Enterprise Edition besides that memory support, but it is there. <sighs> yeah, so domains in this era were still landman domains and basically unchanged from OS2 and NetBIOS. All right, so let's accept the license agreement. Stall. Uh, all right, so let's let the service pack install. So basically, the way 36-bit addressing works is that um, when we are when you're under real mode on x86, you have segmenting, um, and it's not PAE. It is not PAE. Um, and under 16-bit real mode, you have 16-bit address pointers and a 4-bit... Uh, sorry, you have a um, a selector for the segment and then an offset for 20-bit pointers. Uh, the, the offset still exists in protected mode, but has a different purpose. It's not normally used. There's a couple of edge cases where it can be. But it is not normally used. Um, but it is possible to address up to 36 bits of memory on, uh, on in protected mode with uh, with paging enabled. And there are a small number of actual processors that can do this. NT4 Enterprise can do this, and I believe Windows 2000 Enterprise can also do this. Yes. Um, PAE uses segmentation, um, but PAE was not... I want to say XP was the first one that supported PAE, but I do not know that for a fact. So, yeah. Um, yeah, breaking Lotus Notes, I don't know how they did that. Because Lotus Notes was pretty much the application for running Windows. Um... We are going to be looking at the POSIX subsystem for Windows NT, and I am hoping that we're going to make a video out of this. Uh, I am intending to real-time this video. It's actually why I only want to use the Akka V2 model for special occasions, um, but it's actually why we're not doing this one as a charity stream, because I do intend to monetize the video that comes out of this, uh, partially to offset the costs of making it. So I felt that that wasn't appropriate to do for a charity stream. And this is also for me to unwind from what has been a honestly fracking hellish week. I, I don't... The number of things that have gone wrong this week is just completely absurd. Like, I am really trying not to think about it. Um, remote access back in the day was done through remote access services, which is basically dial-up 
and um, Citrix had win frame at that point. So there's that. Um, maybe we'll do terminal services at some point as that one I kind of want to do on real hardware. Um, but I'm thinking the next charity stream is we're going to try Windows 98 on the cursed 486. I'm not convinced it's going to work, but I'm going to have fun trying it. Uh, Telnet's still in Windows 11. You just have to install it. It's not on the default system. All right, so that's Service Pack 6A installed. Whew. But yeah. All right. So let's do the reboot and then let's install networking because that's going to make it a lot easier to copy files across. Because we're we're going to have to copy a lot of files. This this is going to be a fairly long and lengthy project. Yeah. I'm just going to deal with the fact that that's going to be in tiny window while rebooting. Um folks, if the audio is clipping, please let me know. I I can't tell. Like yeah, I, I don't know if someone's adjusting it. Yeah, see, I've got monitor off. I've got the volume turned down. I can lower it more. But, I mean, I'm really... The bars are very low at that point. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. Let me turn down the gain at the interface and see if it helps. Uh, as far as I know, there are still places that uh, that use notes and dominoes. I've heard that it is, in fact, still used in some government sites, but I don't know how much it is still used. Notes mostly has the reputation for being very clunky, but I very rarely have heard horror stories about it back in the day. So let's re-add the network card. Uh, this might want the disk, but it should be able to detect the NE2000 I added. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Domino still shows up in places. It is, I believe Domino is still supported. Uh, I don't remember who's supporting it these days, but it is still supported. Alright, let's see if we can actually find the network card and not crash hey well you know it actually did uh tcp ip is all i care about uh yeah okay so you need to copy files um which means we need to switch the disk but that's easy enough uh so let's see here that needs to be where's my microsoft folder here we go microsoft uh wrong folder this is actually my archive folder because this is um, these are discs I ripped myself. All right, so this would be D three eighty six. That's correct. Uh, we are going to be using DHCP. Oh, IBM sold Dom Domino. Who has it these days? I I haven't looked into Domino in ages. That might be like a really fun slash horrible stream to set up Domino. Like, I, I could see us doing that one for a I hate my life sort of stream. Because I've heard nothing but horror about Domino. I think about the only thing I've heard that is worse is Oracle. And I have set up Oracle. And that was one of the absolute worst things I have ever done. Is because Oracle is just impressive on how pain it is. Okay, so now we gotta reboot again. Um, Domino really gets used in place. Things like Domino really get used in places where there are reasons why you do not want to use Google. That is as far as I can tell. All right. So now we get to reboot this again. Yeah, Oracle Database, like the original, um, the original product. It is really miserable stuff. I don't want to do a live stream on Oracle. It they're a company that tends to be, shall we say. Um, it's not technically against the terms of service of Express Edition. I did look, but 
I just don't want to ha really do anything with Oracle. Like, that's just going to be miserable. And it's a company that I don't want to support. Um, I might do... Like, we could do something with mainframes. It would probably be an older MVS setup. It would almost certainly not be modern ZOS. Mostly because of the IBM licensing situation. It's not an insurmountable problem. Um, from what I've heard, there are... Why did something fail to start? Did this not get an IP address or something? No, you got an IP address. It's weird seeing it in that font. Like... It's a bit bizarre, but okay. Um... So, let's make sure we are running the right version. So, Winver. Yeah, that's fine. So, I think the next thing we need to install... We either need to install the resource kit. Um, I need to install, yeah, like the resource kit, the developer kit, or Visual Studio. Uh... I think we're going to install the resource kit first. Because the resource kit has neat things in it. Uh, so let's go to software, NT. And we will actually read the readme file together. Because I want to illustrate just how horrible this is. And I really hope it actually lets me install it. Because this is the client version of the resource kit. Okay, apparently a name is required. Please don't require server edition. Please don't require server edition. Like, I didn't think there was a separate NT server resource kit, but there could be. So, uh, yeah, so we need to do custom complete, because I don't even think the POSIX utilities get installed. Well, maybe they do get installed by default. Yeah. So, all right, let's let it do that. It's going to check for necessary disk space. All right, cool. Oh yeah, that's right. I think I need to reinstall Service Pack Six. We'll um, we will do that in a moment. I forgot about that. That is in fact something you have to do. Uh, that's wonderful in all the wrong ways. I I forgot how. Fun NT fours. I would have used two thousand because two thousand tends to be the best behaved. But yeah, I mean, basically, the Oracle is basically a nineteen eighties database with absolutely no usability improvements. That that was my general takeaway using it last time I was involved with Oracle. Yeah, okay. Uh, and we do actually need to reinstall this, which annoys me. Like, you know, at least on modern version of Windows, they're updating all the time, but at least you don't have to reinstall the same update over and over again. Uh, granted, had I remembered to install networking first, that wouldn't have been an issue, but, you yeah, know. Uh, hindsight, 2020, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, if I skip backup, it'll be fine, and we don't really need to do backup. So there's that. All right. Wow, we are up to 165 this morning. We are we are definitely on fire. I mean, NT4. I remember being a pretty solid workhorse, as long as you were on not shit hardware. Like there were some. Place like I, um, when I broke into freelancing in 2013 2014, I still had clients that had NT4 hiding somewhere, and I know it's still pretty common in embedded, like legacy embedded at this point, but you still see it from time to time. The largest problem with oh, look, the bots have shown up. Wow, the bots have shown up. Ports, unwanted. Let's see here. Apparently, the bots are awake at 6:44 in the morning. Let's 
to um I will not do an open NT project stream or anything involving leak source. Um I do know what open NT is. I can't stop chat from talking about it, although I ask that you don't. Um it's not going to be something I cover. It, it's simple as that. Okay. Um Yeah. Um by and large, I would also ask that chat please give a round of applause for the moderators both here and on Discord. They have really been going above and beyond with dealing with this week. Especially with the Twitter apocalypse being what it is. I... I was not a fan of Elon Musk before this all started. The fact is that because he basically has had a temper tantrum over Twitter, has just made things so much worse. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've actually watched 8-Bit guy, Guy's story about AST, but that sounds about right from what I remember being in industry. Because I, the very first job I worked was at a medical company from approximately 2004 to 2008 part time so that was very much the era of nt4 and windows 2000 like server 2003 had just dropped but no one was upgrading to it just yet um well nt4 no uh 95 is an upgrade to windows 3.1 it really i have crawled around with a kernel debugger in NT95 in uh, Windows 95 it is Windows 3.1 with 32-bit user land and more graphics it, it really is not much of a difference from Windows for workgroups I would love to get uh, SNA working not that I expect to ever do it but there's that all right Let's, now that we've reinstalled Service Pack 6 for the second time, I have done React OS briefly on, uh, it was what does it take to run the Windows 1.0 application. The reason I don't really want to cover React OS is it's not production ready. And, I mean, Linus Tech Tips did a video on it, and, um... It didn't come. I have problems with Linus's video on React OS. He did, this was quite a few years back, but basically the whole video was the trashing React OS. The problem is that it's not in a state where I could call it usable, and if I do a video on it, it's just going to be overly negative because it's not there yet. I, it may never be there, so I would be very question mark on doing it like if i was to do a react os stream it would probably be just compiling it from source and talking about stuff like it wouldn't be a i like i couldn't imagine what i could do just as a generalized purpose stream on it like i'd have to think about it but um like i'm not inherently against it like some of the other topics that people have bugged me about but I don't know how I could do a stream on it that wouldn't hurt the project. Linus's video was clickbait. Like, it was unfair clickbait because React OS doesn't claim to be fit for purpose. It's not been formally released. It's still an alpha. It's like... It's like going on to DeviantArt, finding someone's first drawing... And then ripping it to shreds. That that was the takeaway I got from Linus Tech Tips video. Uh, and yes, the video was accurate about the stability of the system. It has gone better since that video. But it was really just a YouTube clickbait. And that's why I really just do not want to cover it. I, I don't want to cover it in a way that's going to make React OS. Which is essentially a free and open source volunteer project. Like... They have some funding, but nowhere near enough. It's like, I'm not going to make a clickbait video at someone else's expense. 
Like, I would consider doing one on Haiku because Haiku is formally released at this point and it's stable enough that, you know what? That's fair. But on terms of React OS, I would have to think very long and hard. So, anyway, um, we, we just finished installing the resource kit and let me switch the view so it doesn't open new windows. Um, in the resource kit, in the POSIX folder, we have some commands that people might find familiar like cat, change mode, change owner, cp, grep. Like some of these might look familiar to people. Like let's open a command line. Like, I don't know. Don't this look a little bit um, familiar? Like if I and if I type ls, like I always find this incredibly cursed seeing this on NT4, and these are PE binaries. I'm going when we install Visual Studio, I will show these more in depth. But these are standard Win32 binaries, but they are POSIX subsystem binaries. They are not standard NT4 binaries. Um, so they do not interact with the system in a normal way and they are case case sensitive when you are in the POSIX environment you can not only make links binaries are case sensitive like if I type sh um, oh yeah I have to do a little setup for it like you can't just do that I think I wrote notes on how you do this like I remember I had to go Actually, hold on. I, I remember. There's documentation on how you do this. So, um, fortunately, I documented how you do this. And what we have to do is the first thing we have to do is we have to disable what's called uh, traverse checking. The Postix environment doesn't work correctly with that. Uh, let me bring up the browser window so you can see what I'm talking about. This is directly from the resource kit. And it specifically says if you want to run in a POSIX conforming environment, you must disable uh, traverse checking on your account. Um, it mostly deals with ways permissions are handled. And if you don't do it correctly, um, bad things happen. And because this was NT31, I actually had to do some registry edits afterward to get this all work. It was really kind of obnoxious. But once you get it to work, it does work. So, fortunate, like I said, this is why I do a lot of research before I ever do streams. So, what we need to do at this point is we have to go into administrative tools, um, go into domains, and then I need to go into account policies. No, where is it? User rights, and then you need to be advanced user rights. Uh, bypass traverse checking and I had to disable this right yeah I believe I have to disable this um, bypass grant to everyone uh, specify a checking right and click remove yes that is in fact what I have to do so this gets rid of traverse checking I'm still not completely sure what it does, but it is something we actually do. It will not work correctly without it. Uh, and then I just need to log out and log back in. Um, PE binaries are able to run fork. They are case sensitive and you have access to links. But this, this requirement basically only existed for, um, for contract compliance. So I think the next thing we need to do is we need to add this directory to the path actually we're not going to add this directly directory to the path the way i find that works best uh notepad Wait, nope not notepad well yes notepad but let me figure out where we're going to do this so we create like posix.pat we're going to create this so we need to create uh we need to update the path to set um NT res kit POSIX needs to be in the path 
we need to set temp to temp. And we also need to set the other temp to temp. And I actually need to make sure that exists. Or okay. So we do that. And then if I type sh, it still has problems. But if I type sh.exe, well, no, that uh, ls.exe, not a POS6 program. Uh, CD NT res kit. It's probably an invalid working directory. Uh, I don't remember how I actually fixed this. There is, there are actual SAP instructions to do this. So we set the path. You don't brick it. And then you can type SH. I might actually have to reboot. I don't think it's possible for traverse checking i actually do need to reboot so let's do that or it's more broken on nt4 than it was on nt31 that is entirely possible can't see the display oh yeah okay that was a mistake that was a mistake yes thank you sorry sorry you didn't miss anything except it not working So, there's that. Um, I remember having this problem when I set it up the first time. Hopefully, it's not going to be that big of a problem. Like, we got LS working, which was a good sign. Um, oh, you know what? I know, I'm know. i pretty sure I know what we have to do. It's just going to be irritating. I am probably going to have to edit the system path. All right, so there's that. I'll control delete. Okay. So, like I said, th this is like all sorts of wonderfully horribly broken. So, NT res kit POSX. And this was the script I um I made while we were while the camera was pointed in the wrong place. So, I think what I need to do, POSIX.bat. Um, I think what we just want to do is at the end of this, POSIX sh.exe. I just want to start the shell. All right. So if I do NT res kit, hold on, echo star. Yeah, see, now this is where we start running into problems. You notice that we are having case sensitivity issues. So we have NT res kit in all caps. We need to fix that. So notepad POSIX.bat. So this, because the POSIX subsystem is all, in ca is all case sensitive, this needs to be NT uh, res kit. This needs to be POSIX temp temp alright nt res kit POSIX nt res kit Okay, cool. Now, this was the part that drove me crazy. What we have to do is we have to copy each one of these binaries and rename them like that. So, cp.exe, change mode, exe, um, exe, change mode, uh, cp.exe, change own.exe, like, this is not documented anywhere. This was me figuring this out through trial and error. Uh, cp.exe. Actually, can I do that now? Yes, I can do that now. F uh, find.exe. Find. Cp. Grep. Grep. Ln.exe. Ln. Make dir. Make dir. 
Uh, MS, MS create directory is special. We'll deal with that one later. MV, CP, R, E, CP, arm, D, I, R, D, I, R, C, P, S, H, dot, S, H. Oh. Uh, oh, I did miss LS. You are, chat is in fact correct. LS dot EXE LS. Hey, look, I can actually look up the commands. VI dot EXE is VI and WC dot EXE is WC. All right, let me exit POSIX. And look, I can actually type LS and it actually works. So now you can actually see that we have things like autoexec.bat. But do you want to see something really cursed? Watch this. And I do have to fix the prompt. There is a way to do it. I just... That... Look, look at that. That is what I call cursed... This is, remember, this is NT4. That, uh, that is, that is case sensitivity on NT4. <laughs> um, yes. Oh, yes, I should win Ver this. I should put win Ver on. Ah, <laughs> uh, there, there is something incredibly, incredibly both cursed and satisfying about this. Uh, and there's still a lot more we need to do. Uh, the POSIX system is entirely independent from Win32. Uh, how badly do things break interacting with that file? You know, what? I don't actually know. So let's find out. Let, let, let's actually find this out. Hold on. So let's write in this, 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 this. Uh, that was not what I meant to do. Uh, I need to still fix this shell because obviously it's needs a profile. Actually, I can fit, you know, I should fix that right now. I think I have to just make an ec directory. Uh, Microsoft actually shipped the source code to these things, I believe. Uh, I have to put the resource kit disk back in. Image. Yeah, my, in a very odd case for Microsoft, they actually ship the source code to all these utilities. Uh, it's on the resource kit desk. So Microsoft, uh, let's see here, resource kit, resource kit. That was not the disk I wanted to put in. Like that was actually not the resource. That's the free one resource kit. We want the four. Uh, res kit. Yeah, so if you go, if you put the resource kit disk in, you go to source, GNU, POSIX, and uh, all the source code is here, at least for most of the utilities. Uh, and you may notice that there, and th this is important because things like the compiler is here. Um, there's a few other ones. I don't remember what this pposix script is. This might actually be important. Um... It's sort of important. This just copies all the stuff after you build them. I find though you can't have the exe directory if you want to use it. See, so here's the weird part. Um, if I'm in a standard Windows shell, I can't, I, I have to use a version of the file with the exe, but if I'm running in sh, I can't have it there. Um, it's extremely hack baked. Um, and yes, okay, so these are the files I need right here. 
So, um, let me copy these. Because there, there is a way to, um, there is a way. Okay, so profile, profile. Because it, it will care about case sensitivity. Uh, oh, I didn't do that one right. So now if I exit, uh, it breaks horribly now when I do that. Okay, that that was not that was not quite what I was going for. <sighs> yeah, it's a copy of the the eighty three version of corn. Um, it's not the most recent one. And no, it has to be the top level act directory. It can't be the other one. Uh, okay, so editing this is going to be a bit interesting, and you're going to see why ed editing this is going to be interesting. I think I have to use WordPad for this. I don't think I'm going to manage it. Yeah, I have to use WordPad for this. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's there are things here that are completely broken. Um. Log time terminal initialization. Like, we don't have a uint command. Uh, oh, boy. I forgot how I fixed this. Because I did, in fact, fix this. I just don't remember what I did. Like, because it sets up all these environmental variables. And then... Um, blows up is realistically what it does. I think there's a PS command in here somewhere for setting the... Yeah, for setting the prompt is... It's really the only thing I care about, but probably some of these we care about more than not. Like, is prompt in here... I think all I'm going to do is, yeah, let's just, uh, PS, I think, PS1 equal, if I just do that, I don't actually know if that's going to work correctly, and that's going to have the wrong line ending, so it might be very unhappy when I do that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it put a text dot text on it. Okay. This, this is going well. This is exactly... I think we're going to have to get Vi working because I need an editor that will do Linux uh, Unix line endings. Which uh, WordPad will not. Okay. And I just realized chat is not scrolling. Um, I can add commands. Like, I probably am going to need an editor that doesn't suck. I uh, is there a version of Notepad plus plus that works well on NT4? It's actually a really good question. I don't know. I th I have to think there has to be like Notepad plus plus NT4. Okay, apparently 4.5 actually does work. Let me grab that. Let me grab that. If I can. Uh, there it goes. All right. So let me just get let me just get this into a folder. I'm I'm just doing stuff on my side. I'm not doing anything in the VM. Uh, NT4 bash. Let's see, NT4. And then, what is it? Python dash M. What was the Python quick and dirty web server? The one liner. 
HTTP server. HTTP server. All right, I have to install Python 3. Okay. So now we've got that. Let's open up Internet Explorer. HTTP 10.0.15. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Trying could not connect. Why could you not connect? Or is 15... Oh, it, hold on. I think 2 is the host, not 15. Chat's probably yelling at me. Uh, let's see. Where is nope, this is Internet Explorer 2. I believe this is 2. Yes, this is in fact Internet Explorer 2. Uh, it's apparently having problems with this website. Can't imagine why. Oh, because it's port 8000, not 800. Uh, 8080. So if I do that. Hey, there we go. That's actually useful. Yep, that is IE2. It was probably a licensing reason, but um, as far as I... Well, actually, no. The reason they didn't ship uh, Corn Shell 93 is that Postix Environment predates it. Postix Environment first showed up on the original release of NT3.1 and was never updated. As far as I can tell, there's absolutely no updates for it. Alright. Well, it installed, but apparently it's not usable. Alright. Fine. Let's, can we get an older one that is usable? Alright. If... Oh, you know, it probably wants Active Directory. Or not Active Directory. Um, oh, I don't know. Like, would version 2 work? That's before... I probably have to install after, like, a later... Internet Explorer because of the file it wants. Yeah, I have this distinct feeling we're gonna have to deal with irritation. Alright, let's let that download. That's downloading. Uh I mean what can you really run from this era? Alright, 2.0. If not, I'm going to just have to, we're just going to have to download and install a later Internet Explorer. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. Let's see if version 2 is less broken. It probably is. Maybe. that file like what do I what do I install to get that because we do actually need an editor that this is going to be able to handle uh because that's your windows NT. uh it is part of internet explorer 3 okay so let me grab internet explorer uh let me grab a more up-to-date version of Internet Explorer because very clearly we are going to need it. Uh, let me grab... I'm going to grab Internet Explorer 4 because that was the version that had um, active desktop in it. We might actually need that. Like, you had to install 4 and then 5 on this version if you want active desktop. So that's downloading. Fun, fun with installing stuff that we shouldn't really need, but we need to because this is just such a pile of fail. All right, let's grab that. Grab 
that. Put that download. It's going to take a moment, but it is going to download. So basically the problem is that a lot of programs became dependent on MSHTML and friends being part of the base system. I mean, because Internet Explorer is basically just an application here, it's not a system thing. Although I really have to admit, I really like the flying window right there, like, that's, that's a nice patch. Um, yes, to be fair, period correct software would not require NT, but the thing is that NT4 came out at the very end of 96. Internet Explorer was becoming standard on even Windows 95, it was built into 98, as well as the later OSR2 releases. And application developers were free to distribute it, and Internet Explorer was free to copy for software development. It's actually in the EULA in Visual Studio if you look for it. Uh, it's in the Redist folder. You didn't need a permission. So anyone who actually wanted to use Internet Explorer as a programming component was free to ship it. Like there was no, it was literally included with basically everything. And that was an advertisement point. Includes Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, version four was like on everything. Yep. No, um, there's a Win32 version in the pot in the kit. No, I thought that was only the POS6 version it comes with. Like, oh, hold on, let me look. Let's look. Because we have the resource kit installed. Is there an actual NT version in here? Oh. Okay, apparently there is. So apparently I did this to myself for no actual reason, but we've already come this far. We might as well see it through. We're still going to have to install Visual Studio and the development kit, so there's that. Uh, yeah, it's well hold on we can check it we might as well check it while we're waiting because right now we're doing nothing but Killing time while that downloads Okay, so that is actually not the POSIX version and I can tell Because uh, the POSIX version does behave differently so we will check that out in a moment because if we try and load up the POSIX version, it's actually going to complain that it doesn't recognize. Yeah, environment variable term must be set. So that is in fact a different version of it. Um, but it is a version that we can use, but we might as well just install IE4 while we're here. We're going to need it at some point. So might as well get, I just saw IE Java go by. Uh, I did eat, I made an entire turkey meatloaf earlier tonight, and then it just got consumed. I don't know how many hours we're going to stream for. Um, probably between four and six. I can't see this being a 12-hour stream, although, wow, we are actually up to 175 concurrent viewers. Apparently, this is going to be a big and interesting stream. So, the plan I want to get here is I want to basically demonstrate what the POSIC environment is has and doesn't have um i want to build hello world and maybe we'll take a stab at trying to get a configure script to work i tried this in my research thread but i couldn't get enough utilities built that would make it viable uh we we're using 86 box um did this just extract and not actually launch the installer okay that is apparently what it did uh, uh, yeah, let's just not continue. I don't care. I like living dangerously. Uh, okay, license agreement. Chat, do you think we should do Active Director? Uh, uh, sorry, Active Desktop or not? Let's let's do a poll. Uh, Active Desktop. Yes, no, because it was not mandatory at this point. Um, it was definitely something you needed. This is it. Windows Desktop Update. Let's see what chat says. Um, 
I kind of want to see if we could get Rogue building under Postic's environment, like the original Unix Rogue. I don't know if we can or can't make that work. Yeah, this is NT4. So, uh, chat, it, okay, the poll is making itself known. So, let's get that to install. Let's get that to install. That's going to install. It's going to take a few moments. I'm going to step away from keyboard for a moment while that runs. Um, so, I'm going to turn off the little face cam. That's going to run. I will be back in a moment. Um, so, right there. There is no X server, so I will be back in a few in probably a minute. I'm back. Uh, and then the camera's back. Yeah, I can make the camera a little bigger since we've got screen rail uh, real estate to spare. I ha I just have to make sure there's nothing overlaying this window, so when I go to edit the actual video, I'll have a nice clean feed. Okay, so this this is going to install for a bit. So again, we are now back at Progress Bar Simulator. So essentially the POSIX environment was a way to, in theory, hey look, the sun is up. It, in theory, port Windows, uh, Unix applications and basically be a one shop for all. Like if we look at the document talking about POSIX, uh, and I, let me pull this up. Cause like I said, we've got time to kill right now. So studio mode, browser. Um, I talk about this quite a bit in the research notes, but basically the POSIX environment was, uh, this talks about what it has. POSIX defines a bunch of system calls like fork, um, set proc, so forth and so on. And you have about 110 calls from the standard C libraries. And again, this is straight from Microsoft's documentation. Um, by and large, it doesn't work very well. Um, they're completely sand sandboxed together, and what utilities you do have are very limited. Like, he here's the limitation. The POSIX system does not support printing. You can redirect a POSIX application to a printer, and this literally shows doing that. POSIX 1 applications do not have a requirement for remote file access, but they can access any remote-mounted um, things. With the release of Windows NT, POSIX applications have no direct access to the facilities and features of the Win32 subsystem, such as memory map files, networking, graphics, or dynamic data exchange. I mean, it's completely, it's a complete joke on how pathetic this is. Like, this was literally done to meet government compliance, and it makes a complete mockery of the standards process. Uh, something that later standards we're much more thorough about. Like, this is why um, cryptography standards are much more thorough than they used to be. It's not WSL1. It's... it's POS, The POSIX subsystem was replaced with subsystem, subsystem for Unix, which was made by an external company called uh, Inter, Internex, I believe they were called, that Microsoft acquired and then shipped 
in uh, there it was available for 2000 I also believe it was available for NT but I never seen a copy of it um, and it stuck around it actually stuck around all the way until Windows 8 uh, 8 1 was the last version to have it before subsystem for Linux version 1 replaced replaced it subsystem for Unix is actually usable although it's not particularly good I have used it uh, but it gives you a much more complete environment. Yeah. It's it's an incredibly... Yeah. Uh, I would say the OS 2 environment is considerably more full-baked because OS 2 1.0 applications on NT can make landman calls, which means it has full networking, and you can even install Presentation Manager on top of NT4, and that was supported. And yes... That is what everyone ended up doing. Everyone installed uh, Sigwin, but because Sigwin doesn't support Fork, it is miserably, miserably slow. Um, so, yeah, this is basically how Microsoft made a mockery of the standards process and got away with it. I, I could, I, I, someone had a very cursed idea at the beginning of the. Uh, stream, which I kind of want to do, and yet I hate myself for even having this thought, is Linux from scratch, but I built it, build it from internets, and like I could completely, completely get behind that. Like I could completely see myself doing that, and all the horror that involves. Uh, doesn't support X, doesn't support networking. It doesn't even support the only utilities that were shipped out of the box. Uh, there's a few more than the ones I mean here. Let me let me just pull up the, the readme file for this thing. Like I said, we're just killing time right now, so I might as well pull up the readme. Um wow, this is running really slow as this installs. Yes. Um SFU was a direct extension from POSIX. From what I can tell, Internix was a Windows integrate uh, was a Weiss company, very similar to Mainwin. They basically built on top of the Microsoft source code with permission from Microsoft, and then worked from it. So, this is the documentation for everything Microsoft offers, uh, and it's literally AR Cat CC Change Mod. CP find like it's literally a handful of utilities. The CC utility is something else. Like, um, it says it's a version of the GNU C compiler. Like, this is an actual Microsoft document, but that's not how this works. It's actually a wrapper around Visual Studio or Visual C to make it look like GCC, and this. This is, uh, like it says right here, is like, they they basically ripped this directly out. Like, uh, refer to the info file GCC info. Like, this isn't the actual Microsoft document. And it's referring to something that their tools do not do. Like, they shipped the source code to this. Like, I, I you don't have to take my word for it. No, th this is not a dream. The way this utility works is it uses a flat file on the file system as a mailbox. It needs a dedicated daemon to run. Um, it needs Visual C. It, need it not only needs Visual C++, it needs the full SDK. Um, it, it is the most cursed thing known. Um, most cursed thing I, I have worked with in a while. We, we don't really need Internet Explorer 4, but we might as well install it since we're here. Um, like, uh, it, it, it is impressively bad. Like, if we go to, um, interestingly enough, they also shipped Perl. Uh, although it is a native Perl, it's not a uh, POSIX Perl. But if we go to the readme file, I don't remember where it is. Um, because we we actually are going to have to build the POSIX source code. Uh, there used to be a, they used to ship have this in the README file in the older versions. It's probably here, still in this version. 
iCloud. You can feel it lagging as it's trying to install. So, ah, yes, here we go. So, POSIX, sort, so this talks about all the stuff they shipped. I always like that they put this in the GNU folder, even though it's not actually GNU source code. Um, but if we keep going all the way down, all the way down, here we go. Like, the source GNU POSIX folder contains the C language source code to the POSIX utilities that are shipped with NT4 workstation resource kit. The source code of the POSIX utility binaries are not supported by Microsoft and have not undergone any formal testing. If they do not work correctly and you are a proficient C programmer, and there is in fact a bug we're going to have to fix, you may be able to fix any bugs yourself. Consult the Win32 software development kit for Windows NT, that's not Visual C++, for background information on how to build POSIX utilities. And then it, it actually gets worse as you keep going. Like, you have to use a shell script to get rid of the, the 8.3 file names. The following utilities may need code changes to work on risk-based computers. And you can see that they completely ripped this out of probably NetBSD, although I'm not certain. Um, this is... This is just impressively, impressively bad. You know, the funny thing is that by copying the documentation from GCC, that actually might be a GPL violation. It would depend on where Microsoft got that um, for in this document. But documentation can be licensed under the G GPL or... Uh, GNU free software, uh, free documentation license. Like, do they have a file about that? They don't. That actually might be a copyright violation, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm amazed no one ever noticed that back in the day. Because that is a direct copy of GCC's documentation. That actually might be a GPL violation. No, but the documentation itself is copy and pasted. Like, and they don't put a license on it. So I find that kind of funny. Yes. Yeah, I no one was using this back in the day, which is why no one noticed it. I found it quite hilarious finding this years and years after. Uh, is it snowing where I am? It is not snowing as of yet. It is expected to snow. All right, so, oh, it's installing Front Page Express. Yeah. I have never heard of anyone trying to do anything with the POSIX subsystem. Because remember, back in these days, this was not well documented. You needed you needed the resource kit. You needed visual, um, you needed visual C++. Uh, you needed the SDK and you needed the resource kit. And none of those were all that common. Uh, the Free Sorrow Foundation might have had enough resources in those days. I mean, the FSF stood up to Next uh, in the early 90s. They could have probably made an issue out of it and made it stuck. But copyright law, has you have to prove damages. So I don't know if there would have been a viable case about it. Yeah. Um, it is basically the bare minimum libc for Unix programs to run in a console window. That is basically um, from what I from when I was experimenting with it, it's about the same. I would say it's about the same as BSD 4.4. Maybe it's somewhere between v7 and bsd 4.3 or 4.4 with none of the networking um it's a little bit hard to pin down exactly what it's based off of so there there is that yeah i mean the POSIX environment was basically designed 
to make a joke out of the standard process. I mean, um, in the POSIX subset, I, I actually got found a copy of the POSIX 1 specification. It was actually republished by NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, as FIPS 5152. And if you read that document that talks about this standard exists for um, interoperability pr purposes, you can really see how much of a joke Microsoft made of the whole thing. Yeah. So there's that. Um, it, it's just, I don't know. It, it really is just something else. Like, that's kind of why I want to do a video on it because I'm probably one of the few people that have ever tried to use it. It's impressively bad. Um, and when we get to building software on it, it's actually going to be worse. No, but a lot of it would have been a pretty big victory for free and open source software back in the day. Like showing that the GPL had teeth and that Microsoft was doing this with the POSIX environment, it would have gotten people to notice. Um, like that would have been a very big, it, it, it would have probably factored into a lot of the antitrust stuff that Microsoft was doing in this time period. Because that's a very clear, the POSIX environment is one of the very clear examples of embrace, extend, although extend is very questionable in this po point of view, and extinguish. I've actually never used BOS in depth, so I really can't say. I've heard that BOS's POSIX compatibility is actually pretty good. Um, wow, this is taking its sweet time. Yeah, I think the main problem was that no one knew it existed. Um, like, there was probably a few people that tried, but the resource kit was not, you had to be like a, it was included in the book. Um, like if you, you could buy the NT4 resource kit as a book or all of them as books, but then you'd also need the software development kit. You would need the, um... You would need more than that. You would need a lot of things. I might, I mean, I've been watching Action Retro suffer with um, BOS. Did this, I think something crashed. Are, are we Are we having an active desktop moment here? Because I think we're having an active desktop moment here. Oh no, it's still going. It's just taking its real sweet time about it. Yeah. Uh, IE4 UNT. I actually have a next station um, that we will use on stream at some point. That was supposed to be a stream ago, but it didn't work. Uh, well, this is a Pentium 2. I actually forgot how bad Active Desktop was on period correct hardware. I completely forgot how bad this was. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. I don't even know how the case sensitivity stuff is going to work. Because this is active desktop. Oh, God. How is that? What is that going to do as far as case sensitivity goes? No, look. It's still there. That's kind of neat. We should put something in those files. Like... Let's um let's open up terminal. Uh we need to delete X profile. I'm hoping I can delete that file. Yep, cool. All right, so first thing I want to do, um, let's get into Notepad++. Let's actually fix the profile because th there are things we have to do with this. Wow, that is an old version of Notepad++. That is... That was not what I was expecting. Alright, 
right, so save as um, uh, X profile. All right, hopefully that's all we need. Syntax error on line three. Uh, PS1. That's correct. Uh, let me open the let me open the reference one because I think the syntax is different than I'm expecting. Or is it probably in this file? Global initialization is uh, here's prompt user host name blah 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 blah. Yeah, because we don't... Do we have a who am I? No, we do not. Uh, we do have that. So let me just grab that. Because like I said, it doesn't come with the correct thing that you need. So let me just... Like we don't even have host name, but maybe you have to do something like this. Oh yeah, you probably need to have the quotes like that. So hold on, alias term, uh, and we do we are going to have to set a terminal. I probably need to do an export somewhere in this file. All right, let's. Let's save this. Because I remember having to do this. All right, hold on. PS1. Oh, look, it crashed. No, it's, it does, it, it's literally because there's no profile is why it's having problems. Uh, there is a way to do this because I, I had to do this before. Let me look at my notes. Um, blah, 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 blah. And you can hear me scrolling furiously. Let me change the view so you can see what I'm looking at. All right, system environmental variables. Um, a whole bunch of shell stuff. So this deals with how the files are mapped. It's possible something is very, very broken. Because here I run sh and then I get the prompt. But I don't remember doing this. It's entirely possible this is completely broken. Maybe I have to do sh dash L yeah I can use a later version of the utilities um, and yes I am going to need this file because this has the term cap yeah okay that's this is kind of what I remember we need we need everything that's in this file to make by work um we have to set the POSIX term variable okay i remember this so set POSIX term equal on no that doesn't quite work the way I, it's supposed to uh let me see here let me go back to the C, did the CD, yeah, no, CD's still there. Source, GNU, POSIX. Uh, SH, all files, profile. Uh, process with root privileges. Like, I remember having to do something with this. I really kind of wish I kept 
the drive handy. Do I just need to export PS1 and prompt? Like I said, that might actually be what I just need to do. Uh, export prompt. And that gives me a syntax error, because of course it does. Oh, it probably needs a trailing line. I don't get why that's having problems. Uh, SH, let me put it in the po the top level POSIX script. Apparently my notes were not complete on getting this all to work. Uh, so let's see here. Set POSIX term equal on. Because I'm, re I'm referring to the... Okay. Okay, now hold on. This is actually starting to come back to me. Okay, so that gets set like that. POSIX term on... Same environment. Uh, let's see here. Set command line. Uh, always use the system applet. So I think we have to set these as global variables. I think that's actually what has to be done. So to do that, we need to go to properties, environment, um, and then under path, uh, let's add nt res kit posix set postix term let's see here postix term is on set term is it is an ANSI terminal mostly term cap is c x term cap and yes that is actually valid syntax um and then temp would be c temp like that and then if we do that we have to reboot because that's a change in environment Because there is an actual Microsoft Knowledge Base article about this. Um, again, let me link that. Uh, yeah, I might have made a screw it up. Uh, sorry, you need uh, FIPS. It's 151-1 that has the entire POSIX 1 specification in it. Slash 2 is like a rationale document. Oh, this is going well. This is going well. This is going very well. Okay. I mean, parts of this might be because we're on NT4. As far as I can tell, the only time this had any sort of, like, real support was on NT31, which it did seem to be a little bit better behaved there, but only sort of. So, all right, let's 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 just see if that made any sort of difference. I have that distinct feeling it didn't. No, look at that. Look, I actually have a prompt. I do have an actual prompt that works now. Look at that. That, look at that, that is an actual, you can even see it mapping Windows groups into the POSIX environment. That's neat. Okay, we, we are making headway. We are like, we're making legitimate headway on this one. It's just going slow, but it is going. So we need that POSIX term variable. And for folks, do me a favor and just make sure that like parts of this is getting documented. 
because this is probably the only time this has ever, ever been documented. Uh, I don't have a temp variable, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So if we want Vi to work, yeah, it wants a term cap file. So let's give it a term cap file. Um, I had very serious problems getting this to work last time I tried. Uh, because it needs to have a very specific syntax and it gets very unhappy when it doesn't have it. So the way I'm going to handle this is I'm just going to type it in real quick in the um, browser. And I'm going to fix the syntax because this has to be done with tabs and has to be done basically perfectly or it will not load. Uh, there we go, Python 3, and then, all right, let's see if we can grab that. Uh, I don't want to connect with this thing, I just want to open the browser. Please just open the browser. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Grab that. Okay, that needs to just be saved to desktop. Like that. File download. All right, so term cap. Yep, that's fine. Um, where would I, okay, hold on. Where, where would that get saved? It wouldn't be, I don't remember where NT, is it NT profile? I don't actually remember where that, uh, where the NT home directories are on this version. Term cap, properties, profiles. Uh, you know, I think I, I think I can safely cut and paste like that. So now the question is, hey, look, Vi works. Look, we actually have a working co we have a working program. We have Vi. So let's do something kind of neat with this. So with Vi, let's do um, this file is this and was made in the Postix subsystem. And then this this was also made in the POSIX subsystem. Yay case sensitivity. Um, and didn't we have another one? And this. This has a leading capital. Look at that. <laughs> so I am now really curious. What what does chat think it's going to have? I'm going I'm actually going to open a I'm not even going to do a poll for this because I actually have no idea. I'm going to open these files with Notepad++. I'm going to install a new version while I wait for chat lag to catch up. What do what do people think is going to happen? Uh when I do this. Oh, wow, looking for authenticode signatures. Man, this is a different era of computing. I remember that back in the day, having to do authenticode. So, we'll see. So, yeah, that's basically how that starts. And, folks, do me a favor. Like, promote me on social because I'm no longer using Twitter all that much. So, on Fetty. Um... And if any of the wiki editors are here, definitely this is going to be a good write-up for the wiki. Uh, Vi was included. Vi was included. It is the most complex app there. Uh, that is not the version of Notepad++ I want to be running. Like the much, much newer version, please. Um, I probably need to use a much newer Notepad++, but you know, this this will be fine. 
So let's try opening this. The, look at that, it's opening the wrong file. Yeah, it can't, the WinFairy2 API can't deal with this properly. <laughs> this is this is glorious on how broken it is. I love this. Um, let's make a sim link. Let, let's make a junction link. The uh, I don't know if dash s works. Let's see here. This I I know it works with folders. Temp temp link. This should make a junction link. Oh, it doesn't support sim links. Okay. Today we learned. Um pos6.bat pos6 link dot bat. Or uh Oh it made it! It made it And it's, I think it's hard linked. There's no dash L there, but I think that's a hard link. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's make an edit to that file. So let's edit the, let's. Okay, so that's POSIX bat. POSIX link dot bat. Uh, you're right, that's not going to work right because it's got the wrong light, light, line endings. But okay, hold on. Did that actually generate a link? All right, so hold on. Uh, Rem, is this a link? Well, NT supports junction links, and this should work. Look, it actually did. That is an actual link. That is an actual hard link on NT4. And I did test this on 3.1. <laughs> Look at that. That is, that is, that is, what does it show up in Explorer? I'm actually curious. I've heard Explorer can crash with these. Like it doesn't handle them correctly. Yeah, it doesn't even recognize it as anything special. That, that's kind of amazing. Uh, Petro, I'm using them. See, there is one person in existence. Microsoft made this feature. So 30 years later, I could sit here and entertain you all. <laughs> um... So you could you lock a file and open its hard link. Files accessed through the POSIX environment do not cause a lock to form. That is an N, that is a Win32 thing. That is not a window. That is not an NT kernel thing. Um, so I think at this point the next thing we want to do is I think we're going to want to install um we're going to want to install some development tools and let's do some like you know development stuff. So I'm gonna ask chat, what do we install next? Um, you cannot just use flag file flag postic semantics. That actually does not work by itself. The reason it doesn't work by itself is that there is a special flag called OB, OB case insensitive that it has to be set for the 32-bit subsystem to even talk to case insensitive if ob case sensitive is enabled and then you use file flag postix semantics and sidegen is the only real world application that i know does this then you can create case um sensitive files through the win32 api so there is that there are also junctions um, because we have the resource kit installed. We uh, we should have make link installed. Uh, res kit. Oh, maybe it wasn't in this version. That may have come later. Like the API, no doubt. What is sudo? Hold on. 
Oh, uh, it's it's a knockoff version. Hold on, uh, let me open this in WordPad. I should probably like do an entire video just doing the resource kits. Because there's some weird stuff in these resource kits. All right, so folks want to see Visual C++ next. And, you know, I kind of agree with them. So let's grab Visual C++. Um, yeah, so Microsoft. So Visual Studio 6. So I will note that this is not technically speaking the correct compiler. And you'll understand why why I say that because strictly speaking I should be using VCC4 but VF VCC6 is less garbage by a lot so I think this is what we are going to go with so let's just install it and let's go with it yes um, we've we, we, we did something useful with it we did do something useful with it. No, Junction was involved. Junction's been there. I fought from the beginning. There was just no way to do it for the Win32 API. Like we 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 have Vi we have Vi working. In fact, we have the source code to that version of Vi. Um, like if we want, we we're going to actually compile it. So I, there's no point in doing it right now. But the version of Vi that Microsoft shipped, it's. Uh, it's Elvis. It's one of the non at t encumbered ones. As far as I can tell, they took the code from um, either free 386 BSD or um, or not. We need um, Petro. We need both Visual C++ for the compiler, and we need the SDK. Um, the NT4 SDK doesn't have the compiler, so you need both. Um, the older SDKs did come with a copy of CL, but it doesn't seem to work correctly. Yes. Um, it's possible that it's just the LN command that does having. Yeah. So there's that. So actually, maybe we don't need Visual C++, but you want to know something? I do want the code editor, so uh, we're just going to install it. It's just going to make my life easier. Uh, on that note, if you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoy this content, uh, consider supporting the channel. Um, so there is that. Current. Wow, we are actually doing really good today. We are only two hours on with an average view duration of 20 minutes and over a thousand views on stream. This is apparently one of my more popular ones. Or maybe it's just because streaming at 6 a.m. in the morning is the way to go. But I think we might do a follow-up to this stream. It's Like I said, it's not going to be today because I'm going to have to go find all the bits for this. And I want to make sure we have all the footage we need of testing this on the MIPS environment. But I think what I want to try and do is perhaps we're going to try and build Rogue. Like, I, I really would like to see us try and build Rogue because I think that would be a fascinating use of the Postix environment. If not, it doesn't happen, but, you know. Okay. Lip, thank you for the two euro super chat. Yes, and the next the next fundraiser for Trevor Project will be on Thanksgiving. We're going to do Windows 98 on the cursed 486. Or, uh, that's the plan anyway. Whether it actually happens, I'm not completely certain, because that 486, well, is possessed. But, um... Uh, do I have a clean recording? I have... No, it's it's showing that way locally as well. There's not a lot I can do about that. Um, I don't know what's causing that. It's some sort of anti-alias issue with 86 box, and I didn't have enough time to fix it. Like the scaling problem, it doesn't look horrible to me. Uh, but what, maybe it's a problem with OBS. Like, do I have the scale wrong in OBS? 
it is actually possible that this is an OBS problem. Hold on. Uh, as soon as it goes back to full screen, let me see if I can fix that. Because it's possible I screwed up the scaling slightly. Alright, so hold on. So that's there. Transform. Set transform, and now I put that there. Make it a bit bigger. I feel a bit bad for my. I feel a bit bad for my editor because he's going to have to fix parts of this. But uh, we'll do what we can. Um, it's not going to be the. As far as the presentation goes on the video that I hope to make, it's not going to be a hundred percent the happiest that I've ever done, but. I just have to deal with it. I literally don't have the time to do this the way I want to, which annoys me, but so be it. All right, hopefully that's a little bit better. All right, uh, custom. Okay, starting visual six startup. Yeah, it literally is just a C library. Once we've got the SDK installed, I will show you the header files. Um, you'll see how little is actually there because you can only access those functions. And then when I show you how the development tools work, they're even worse, but I, I almost feel like, like my next stream, I should just do it midnight, which probably will be trying to get Soylent News' rehash running in Docker, which is gonna be a really, really miserable stream. Just because I'm going to have to do so much and I don't like working with Docker. Um, I'm not going to install everything. We don't need it. I might grab Visual Source Safe, although I really don't think I... You know, I'm not that desperate. I'm not that desperate enough to use Visual Source Safe. I might regret that sentence, but we're not doing that today. That is just not a thing we're doing. So how, how are folks in chat doing as of late? I mean, I, I know that I can't be the only one that has been, shall I say, suffering and panicking because of um, the Twitter apocalypse. Um, yeah, I'll let this register. You know what? No, I'm not going to let this register. No, I'll, I'll, we'll add it manually. Because I don't actually, you know, now I'm not 100% sure we actually need the SDK, but it's probably a good thing to have it. Well, yeah, I mean, setting up Mastodon has been a miserable instance. Um, Mastodon has been very much a learning experience. A lot of it is I'm going to have to have people help me manage it because it's... A significant enough time sink that I can't do it full time. Now, as far as the YouTube channel goes, it varies month to month, but with regular streaming, I can pull probably combined with Patreon and coffee income, I can pull enough that I could get someone, I, I could compensate someone to keep it going. I mean, I'm going to. For folks that are Patreons, and I will post this publicly, I am essentially going to set up a business plan that's going to talk about most of this. Um, but by and large, there are a lot of stuff that we're doing that is not video related that I want to fund or be able to do. It is part of why I'm actively job seeking, um, which I am optimistic that I will find something. Hopefully I'll have some more interviews in December. I'm hoping to have something by early January. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a sure thing, but I am feeling fairly optimistic about it. Um, basically, Fetty or Fettyverse basically deals with anything that uses um, ActivityPub because they're all intercompatible compatible with each other. Um, Mastodon is just the most common client, but there are others. Um, 
Like Mastodon is horrible if you want to do what's called a single user node. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Ple uh, Plemera is probably the best one for that, but there are others. Yeah. Um, the fact of the matter is that it's not been great for job hunting in the United States with the way the... <sighs> we are basically having a very serious recession here in the United States. Um, as a side effect of four years of Trump combined with the energy crisis affecting us quite badly. Um, I've gotten people getting cut back to me, but nothing is a sure thing right now. Yeah. Um, Fetty's upstream is, we're not following the direct Fetty upstream branch because it's missing things. We're running a fork of a fork. Um, because we were originally on Glitch, because I need things like the ability to import and export the block list, um, because there are sites that you want to defederate with because they're known spam, but you can't do that with Stock Mastodon. There is no option to import a defederation list. So that's why we're running Glitch, and then we're running a bunch of patches on top of that. It's this giant pile of pain that should not have to exist, but it does. And I just realized how dark I actually am on camera, so uh, let me take a moment to adjust the exposure on my camera. I didn't realize it was that dark. That is the wrong way. Hey chat, you can actually see me now. I didn't realize it was that dark. Uh, it probably was fine when we started, and then the sun came up. So yeah, there's that. Um, Mastodon is a hot federated instance that every, if you have an account on any instance, you can talk to accounts that are anywhere. Um, and it's all microblogging, but the fact of the matter is Mastodon's user experience completely sucks compared to Twitch. The only reason that we're seeing a large uptick in Mastodon, because it's been around for ages, is because no one wants to be on Elon Musk's Twitter. So Elon Musk bought Twitter, fired basically everyone that was involved with it, and then, as of today, unbanned Donald Trump. Like, all this in rapid succession. Um, the site is working very poorly. Uh, I believe New York Times reported, although I don't have confirmation, he fired over um, 1,200 jobs. Basically, the only ones there are like those who quite literally cannot leave because of either visa issues or more. <coughs> um, honestly, don't underestimate how long an infrastructure can go without constant tweaking, but it's been lagging. And it's about to get slammed hard, um, mostly because the World Cup kicks off today, actually, in uh, uh, Qatar, um, which means that Twitter is going to be under extreme load. Previous World Cups have taken it down. Um, the best one I have seen thus far is apparently the DCMA bot is not working. And people are just uploading full movies to Twitter. Like, I've seen that one happening. It's like, Twitter's version of content ID is not working. So, uh, yeah, that's... It, 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 we are literally watching Elon, Bu uh, Elon Musk turn $45 billion into a much smaller amount of money. Um, so it's, it's not going well over there. And for the people that are stuck at Twitter, I don't know if anyone in my stream watches them. Best of luck. I, I, I'm really going to need it. All right. 
So that's Visual Studio 6.0 installed. Um... I have actually seriously considered setting up a BBS for this end cord and restless systems. And I just realized I need to fix this. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure my editor is not going to be happy with me because I keep moving that window. But that's fine. This is fine. Oh, it's going to be a really, really fun week. I'm just, I'm looking at my camera and it's like... It, it's just been a complete dumpster fire. It's about the only way I can describe it. Um, it's really... We are hitting an upper limit of how much End Commander can scale. Um, if... We, we just did a very large expansion of the moderation team uh, for the community on Discord. Um, we have... I, I, I honestly have to give major props to folks is they've been doing a lot of work on getting articles written up for the wiki link is in the description um, they've been helping me tremendously like if I did not have the efforts of people supporting me I honestly don't even want to think about the hell I would currently be in, be in right now like I I've really just been sitting and um not so much sitting, but the reason that I can justify taking a few hours live streaming is because this is something that very much um, helps as far as peace of mind, because I like making content, I like streaming, and while I don't have the time to do video editing, uh, I can live stream, and, you know, it... It does help. It, self care is important, especially in this time, you know, these, this day and age. It was a lot of why I was live streaming during election day to try and get people out to vote. I don't know how much of a difference that really made, but um, if nothing else, did I put the wrong CD in? I put the wrong CD in. Is this the NT4 one? Probably the NT4 one because it does have. Uh, yeah, 1996. This is, in fact, the, the, the uh, um, the one. I just noticed that I probably didn't need to install Visual C++ because, do we have the compiler here? Actually, no, we don't have the compiler here. Um, it was there in the original, um... Yeah, it was there in the original SDK release for 3.1, but then they took it out, and now it, you had to buy Visual C++ for it. So now we have to install this one. So um, Visual C++ has a cut-down version of the SDK, and then you get the full SDK that basically comes with everything. Um, and then if you... Yeah, here it is. See, copy POSIX development tools right there is that last one. Uh, so, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's do that. Uh, NTVDM, uh, so, yeah, NTVDM is not a full subsystem on NT. It actually runs as an application. Uh, actually, how it works is really cursed, um, because on non-x86, it actually has a licensed copy of soft PC doing emulation. Um, True Social got in trouble over AGPL, actually. Um, that was a thing that happened. Uh, so, yeah. That was definitely a thing that happened. Okay. So this is going to take a bit of time to install. Um, I'm going to run an ad break. Uh, I'm, i got to get more used to putting ads in during dead periods. I don't like running ads, but YouTube ad revenue plus Patreon is what's going to be supporting a lot of the things going forward. And, um, like, when I streamed occasionally, like, like once a month or then, I would get a lot with Super Chats. But, again, I, I've, 
I, I just filed for incorporation. That was five hundred dollars just for the paperwork. I'll probably be a full thousand in by the time all is said and done. Plus, there are additional taxes things I have to deal with, but it's what I need to do if I want to pay people going forward because there's a lot of pain if I just do it all under my legal name. So, there's that. It's it's just the nature of the beast. Um, and sorry, you're, you're listening to N Commander rant about running a business is hard. Not... You know, like I don't see this as a business. I see this as building something awesome. But you have to consider the business aspects as part of that. And did my stream panel lock up, or is chat just being quiet? I think stream is just being quiet. I mean, if we really wanted to do it, absolute. Well, you know, sorry, we already did that one. We we actually did. Let's build Firefox from scratch with the entire operating system, like. God, that was a that was a forty hour stream. Although I, I I did actually go and look at um those streams. We are we it appears that we are now past ten thousand dollars raised for charity this year. Um about six or seven. I'm gonna have to go add up all the all the um totals. But I think it came to like seven or seven thousand with about three for um, Planned Parenthood and the rest being for NNAF. Uh, the acronym I don't want to say because of the YouTube police. So there's that. So I don't really know what Firefox is doing these days. They're still based around Gecko, but like. I, I can't think of any compelling reason to run Firefox, except it's not Google. Um, but Google forked WebKit to form blank. Apple is still using WebKit for Safari on iOS and macOS. Um, and they're not allowing it anything else but WebKit on iOS, so it stays relevant. And on these days... Trident is still used in places on Windows 11, but it's very much um, having its time come to an end. Because Trident is still used in Win32 native applications, uh, and like you're not going to see that get replaced. Yo, know, I just noticed something. Is this was that what I thought it was? Is the source code to the 3D maze? Included in the Win32 SDK, I, I think I need to check that out because I didn't know that that was there. Maybe, maybe that will be a future stream where we go through all the Windows SDKs and take a look at all the applications because we've done that for Windows 1.0. But there were different applications for different versions of Windows, so that would basically install all the development tools for every version of Windows. And we might even do that for Mac, although you can't do it properly in vMac. It, it really needs to be on physical hardware when I tried it. So there's that. I think I, I think we want some different music to listen to. Although Chiptune does do it for me, but I think I want more ambient. Or uh, yeah, ambient. Okay. I will note that people who watch the stream with premium, I do get revenue for that, and I do appreciate people who do. So yeah, so basically that's how my week has been going as of late. Is just complete dumpster fire i did send my resume off for two more jobs uh one one that i'll comment on if i actually get the interview and then i sent off the resume for a tech writer for linux news weekly i don't actually know if that rec is open it was a little bit old and sometimes companies are not always good at closing them but that would be a really cool job to land i also spent a stupid amount of time like probably about 10 hours 
rebuilding my entire LinkedIn page from source. Because I've discovered that a lot of companies now require you to not only link your LinkedIn, it has to automatically import your resume. So if you're job hunting in this day and age, you need to have LinkedIn. Uh, Kayak fan, thank you for the 11 euro uh, super chat. I will actually note that I considered doing a kayak trip all the way up the Erie Canal a few years ago. And I might still do that someday because that just sounds like a really fun time. I've biked the entire length of it. I biked from Buffalo all the way to New York. So doing uh, for an amateur kayaker, like if I was to launch from Poughkeepsie, I should be able to make Lake Ontario with no big issue. Or that's the theory anyway. Uh, all right, so it needs debug symbols. Uh, archive, back office. Hoping it's here. Yes, it is. Uh, apparently something broke. Uh, I'm going to let finish copying this and then we'll put the other disc back in. Yeah, this, this doesn't feel like the most stable or solid of really, um, release processes. Oh, look, and then it, it actually started an auto start. This, this is going well. Uh, uh-oh. All right. So I think at this point we need to put the other disc back in. What probably happened is there's a race condition and the disc was changed too fast. Uh, actually, this is not where I keep my dev tools. All right, All right I think it installed. Cool. That actually did install. So let me open up Visual C++. And let me just give you an idea like, um, an idea of what we have to work with. I, I don't like, I was assigned to work as a liaison at um, a major semiconductor company. It was an arm partner in China. I lived in Shanghai day in and day out in the Pudo, uh, in the Pudo district, which was a fascinating experience. Like I got to see things that probably most westerners never get because I had to I had to get permission from the Chinese government to do this, like to stay there for that long. Um like I had a temporary residency permit. Um it, it was a lot of paperwork because this was in 2010. They really, it was before they really normalized a lot of the visa stuff. So I had to get the letter of invite. It was a really incredible process to get it. So um, this is what the POSIX environment gives you as far as headers go, which is not a lot. Like, I don't even have... I don't think I actually have a STID IO. Like I have the Microsoft one and you have a few other files. Like I have Aer um, Aerno and Terminal, but like most of the things that you would expect to be here are not here. Like if I open this one, like you get parts of like the file number and you can see the things that they implement like file okay, seek, and symbolic constructs and the like, as well as like some of the functions, like get UID, get GID, so forth and so on. As well as, and actually I opened the right file because that's fork. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't in China for very long, but I was there. Upgrading the Windows servers actually went I actually had a Chinese bank account while I was there. I had to even file it on my taxes that year because the IRS requires me to disclose foreign bank accounts. 
because at the time the china china was not really connected to the international network like you could not use a mastercard there um it's gone a lot better since but again the olympics had just happened uh the night then the um the 2008 ones and i it had only been two years since when i went back in 2018 i actually went from mongolia to beijing by rail let me tell you that's an experience and i had considerably less problems traveling through china than i did the first time around it may have helped that i was on a multi-entry tourist visa instead of a business visa but it mostly it just went a lot more smoothly which it's become a lot more accommodating towards tourists prior to covid i had to have help with that one but there was a legitimate fear that i would not be able to pull money from a u.s source um in china um by and large it's unusual for a western company to send a westerner to liaison there but the circumstances were that we could not deal with the 12-hour time delay and i actually had a valid chinese business visa in my passport it was for a trip that had been canceled it had not been used which meant that i could do this on very short notice but there was no guarantee that i was going to have any way of getting western resources i mean we had pro i couldn't even talk to the mail server because of the great firewall it was incredible i should probably write up my experiences in china but you know i am before i get onto it i mean just look at all these system calls i mean this looks like a unix system and these are the things that you have available in the POSIX environment like change own rmd link unlink dupe dupe two yep so about to drop yep um i got very creative with ssh port forwarding that to literally send an email so i was assigned to i mean i probably could name them and it like it wouldn't matter but um i was assigned to um the semiconductor and i was a uh, company and um at the time my workplace's email was based on google google was already blocked by in china at that time including their smtp servers so i had to send everything from my at canonical mail address because you know business uh, the way I solved this was I had I, I set up Postfix locally on my laptop, and then I set that to connect to a second Postfix instance in my apartment back in Rochester. The, so I would send email from Bay, from Shanghai to Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York would then send it to Canonical's mail server in Millbank in the UK. The UK one would then send it onward to Google's mail server uh which closest path was to ireland and then from ireland it would then go to shanghai and go up two floors literally sending an email had to go around the world because of the great firewall sorry it was not going through google i'm misremembering that came later we were still self-hosting email at that time so yes um literally to send an email to um two flights up it had to be sent through a um sent via uh to go around the world by and large it's accepted that westerners are going to get around the great firewall um it was expected um that i would have communication with the resources back home uh i could have used a vpn it, it is just what it is it's what's expected um and you just kind of hope for the best all right so anyway now that we've got this all installed we should probably do something with it um but this is by and large why it's very unusual for westerners to be assigned to liaison to china it was a lot of things um basically lined up at once to make that happen and like one of the biggest problems i ran into was 
I couldn't find a place to do laundry because in China, laundry is normally handled as a place of where you're living. It's sort of like an attached service. Um, I had to find a laundry service run by expats. It was actually two Americans who ran a laundry service for other expats in China. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever did. So I just filled up my duffel bag filled of clothes uh, because I've been living out of a backpack for months at that point. China was just the long step of many other ones. I took the line six to People's Square, walked about three blocks. It was in this very fancy building. And they just basically had a laundromat run by two Americans. It was the f only two Americans I saw the entire time I was in Shanghai. Yeah. But there was no place to do the laundry where I was staying. Like, I couldn't find a laundromat. I tried. I, I literally tried. It was the only thing I could find. Um, I didn't have a lot of help on the ground in China. Uh, and that was still pretty early in my traveling career. I don't think I'd even gone to Iraq by that point. I think that was before I did Iraq. Um, I was doing something relevant to the to this actual project. And, oh, yeah. Okay. I, like, if I had help, I we could have probably found it. But I was not anywhere near civilization. I mean, I was all the way out in the manufacturing hub. Um... Like, I was the very last stop on the MRT at the end of Shanghai. Like, there was nothing out there. Like, the only thing was the hotel and a family mart. I, like, I subsisted. Oh, and there was a Pizza Hut. There was a Pizza Hut. And that was it. Like, I, sus I, I subsisted on that family mart for ages. So um, let's try and build the POSIX source code because we, we're going to need a whole bunch of utilities um, for this. So what you can do, so the way you do this is we copy the files over here and then this is going to get built. And what's very interesting is that in the POSIX binaries, lib, libc appears to be statically compiled um, from what I've seen. Yeah, so we get all that. Um, we found there was too much source code corruption in that in uh, network Unix. It, it's still very valuable as a research tool, but I reached the limit of how far I could take it. Uh, and the where I could take it, unfortunately, was not good enough um, to make a video about it. So, all right. So now that we've got the POSIX environment and the SDK and the compiler installed... The next step we need to do is we need to build um, we need to build um, the source utility because this has our C compiler. This has front end for CC to be a uh, POSIX compliant. And the way this works, and oh boy, this is cursed. This maps all the GNU C options and links them directly to visual c++ options which you can see right here yes uh i will say that i really got fond of family mart i really got fond of the buns and the uh tofu i also went to a lot of the night markets and a few months later i ended up visiting taipei just for the sake of it and i between the two of them you can eat amazingly well at the night markets so there's that. Yeah. So this is basically the CC front end, but the way it works is at best possessed because the way it um it has to communicate with a daemon on the window side, and they actually misspelled that. Look, daemon. Uh, just to show how this works, and like I said, I've already gotten this to work. It's just going to be really interesting. So now that we've got that set up, uh, what did I call that? Um, yeah, so POS, let's see here. Let me rename that. POSIX, POSIX source. All right, maybe we'll do this in the UI.
Oh, and I need to actually remove the read only bit. And hopefully this does that recursively because I copied it off the CD. Yeah, it doesn't. Hopefully that's not gonna be a big deal. It might be, but it probably, POSIX source. And then you need to run long name and then that fixes all the file names to have proper paths. That being said, I'm actually going to step away from keyboard here for a moment, so um, I'll be back in a f probably two minutes. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Uh, my stomach has not been really happy. All right. Whew. Yeah, I mean, I would love to spend more time exploring China, although I don't know how realistic that's going to be for the foreseeable future. Uh, I just realized there was a lot of super chats I didn't read off. Um, Icarus Mad, thank you for the 10 Australian super chat. Uh, Yosoy, thank you for the $20 super chat, and I did read Kayak Fans. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, Family Mart was not what I call quality food. I didn't have a kitchen to cook in. I really, it was really eating out, and even then, I, and I had some incredibly bad, I, I had some really fun and scary experiences when it came to time leave the, leave China, and it will be a, story for another day i don't know if i'll I, I just to keep you all a bit interested um basically i nearly had a visa violation in china because of an overstay i i got out of the country in time but it was close um so what we need to do right now though is we need to actually compile all these utilities so to do that 
Microsoft Visual Seer VC98 CD bin VC VARS 32. Okay, cool. Now we have CL. So now we need the SDK. Uh, so where did the SDK install to? I think it installs to MS Tools. Yes, it does. Actually, did you install, just out of curiosity, no, you didn't actually install anything useful. Uh, so now, after you set up, have C on the path, you have this script called set NV post text. Yeah, like that. And then I believe that sets everything we need correctly. Uh, oh. Right, this version of the shell, you can't actually um, back scroll. Yes, okay. So MS Tools, POSIX, H, meaning that's included, and then under lib, that's also included. So now, in theory, we should be able to compile all this. So let's try so i should just be able to run and make yeah and it is building it it's building all the POSIX binaries cool we are definitely going oh god my stomach is not happy it's like i said i i haven't i have slept very little in the last few days last night i actually got a decent amount of sleep but it's the exception, not the rule. Um, all right, let's just minimize all this. So basically, Microsoft g shipped a very small subset of POSIX binaries. Uh oh. Apparently, they never tested compiling with this version of the compiler because uh, it just stopped. Compiling. I'm going to have to actually redirect this to an error log. And we're going to have to fix that. Uh, okay, so notepad error.log. Where, where did you die? Alright, so you died in Elvis. Okay. Um, error, 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 line 60. Alright, so we can fix that. So these did build without issue with the older visual c++ but visual c++ 6 was stricter than what came before and if you know the type of code this compiler will accept that's a little bit horrifying all right let's see here so that would be elvis main and it says line 60 it doesn't like uh Try accept. What? Set jump cludge. Why is it having, why is it complaining about this? Why is it complaining about this? Uh, it shouldn't be complaining about this unless there's a flag missing. Oh, you're right. Uh, is there? Hold on. Is there a way I can just force this to believe that code is C++? I have that distinct feeling. I can't. Yeah, that's probably too easy. All right. So, why the hell did they do that? Like, ugh. All right. Let me close this file. Uh, actually, no. Let me open the make file because obviously we're gonna have to make changes here. Uh, I didn't think the compiler would be that picky, all things considered. Um, so make, there should be a make file. There's two make files. Hold on, wait. Did I see that right? Yeah, no, there are, in fact, two different make files. Um, I believe I need to... Uh, 
Okay then, hold on. Let, let's figure this one out. Uh, make file and make file dot mix. Okay, so that's actually not as broken as I thought it would be. I mean, it's pretty broken, but it's not that broken. So main dot c. Like, do we really? Is that the type of rename we? Yeah, fully. We need to make the files. I I hate I I forgot that this is a. Bug. I should have X copied this. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Alright. Uh, so if I make that main.cpp. No, it actually hates that more. Uh, that's that's actually a problem. Uh, I could probably I mean this isn't actually MFC this is just C um, that's been very lightly modified let's let me figure out how to handle this Oh wow, Beaverton. I actually used to live very close to Beaverton when I was out in Oregon. Um Try accept. Try. I'm trying to think on why this code needs to exist. Because set jump is used to basically go from point to point in the code as an exception handler. Uh, we might be able to comment it out. I mean, we don't actually need this binary, realistically speaking. Like, I, that is valid. It, it probably will have issues if I try using it for real, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems to be okay. Let me see if it actually builds in links. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically, if it gets an NT exception, it just bails out. I mean, the there is, there is hacks here. There are hacks. All right, I'm just going to live with that one because we don't really need that binary. We just need the other ones. So let's just let it build. And then once it's done building, I can do more things with it. We already have a compiled version of uh, Vi, which is Elvis. It's the one that they shipped. And I've compiled it with the older VCC compilers. I just didn't think it would blow up with six. Which, uh, hindsight being 2020, I should have expected that. Because 6 is not the right compiler for this version of NT. No, this is... VC6 is too new for this. Officially, Visual Studio 4 was the correct version for NT4. Oh, Foon has a thread on it. Uh, the problem is it's on Twitter, which is not a place I really want to go. But, um... I'll take a look for that later. That might be a neat project. Um, yeah, actually, hold on. Uh, if it really is try and accept, let's let's try and change that because I rather not. Let me just see if that works. Okay, you know what? That works. That that actually works just fine. Uh, Foon has his, 
uh, sorry, Foon has their threads archived to their wiki, uh, and they also um, are now on Mastodon. Yeah, uh, Foon has backups. No, I got resolved. I got resolved. Chat was correct. It needs to be try and accept. So, so now if we take a little bit look here, we have binaries. And if we take a look at these binaries with the right utilities, that was less than useful. Uh, is hold on. Isn't there a way I can turn scroll back on on NT4? Like I know it's not the default. And actually, out of curiosity, if I switch the font. Uh, and I make you bold. Does that look better? No, that looks worse. That actually looks way worse. Uh, so yeah, let's just stay with a raster font. Yeah, let's work with that. Uh, but there is a way to turn back scroll on. Um... Quick edit mode. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Buffer size 50. I think it's quick edit and insert. It may have been a later version that you could do that in. Uh, apply. Okay, so maybe it wasn't supported in this version. Uh, all right. Screen layout properties. And we'll just set that to 500. I, yeah, no, I can't seem to be able to back scroll. I think it wasn't in this version. So layout in the settings tab. Ah, okay. Um... There we go. All right. So if I, I don't remember what line it is. I think it's done. I think it's under summary. So I do dump in summary vi.exe. Nope, it's not under that one. Uh, let's see here. vi.exe. Let me just, because I want to, I do want to actually show this. I just need to remember where it actually is. It, I think maybe it's P data. P data. Nope. Uh, I'm looking for the thing that has all the data about the PE file. I guess I'll just do all. Uh, that was not quite what I wanted, but it's probably close enough. Uh, okay, I guess it's in headers, file header value. Yeah, all right, so let's do that. So dump bin headers via exe, because I, I do want to point this out. So basically, what makes POSIX binaries unique is PE files, which stand for portable executables. Um, they can be compiled for different binary for different architectures like this one is built for i386 um oh sorry is it beeping i didn't realize the pc speaker was on hold on uh maybe it's not okay uh so portable executables are called that because they're used on all the nt architectures and you can see here, this is built for i386. Um, this is going to be an end commander in real time video. It's why it's I have it floating separately with the face cam not overlapping to make things easier. Um, I'm just getting all the footage at once. But what makes a POSIX binary special is right here. Subsystem POSIX CUI. Um, which means that this is to run in the POSIX um, environment. There are flags that say POS uh, OS2 environment. 
So I have wondered if it's possible to build a POSIX environment that uses the OS2 environment. Um, I'm not certain if it will or will not happen. Uh, sorry, if that is or is not possible. But it is possible to build POSIX binaries for non x86 NT. And I have a couple here, because let me show you what I mean by that. So if we grab like a standard binary from the resource kit, uh, dump in, or actually let me show imports just because it is important. So imports vi.exe. Um, you can see that it's pulling in a bunch of functions called P like, look at all the, these are all Unix functions. But see, it pulls in what's called PSX DLL, which is the POSIX uh, runtime environment. And then you can see all the symbols it's pulling in. Like, that looks like just a Unix libc right there. And like I said, when, um, Microsoft shipped the source code to most of this. It's here in... Um, like, you can see that they have a copy of V Fork, but how they implemented it... Like, this is hilarious. Because uh, I looked at this. I really like how they implemented V Fork. You know, it, they, like, this this isn't half-assed. Like, th this isn't half-assed at all. Um, you know, make node. Ju just, this one actually has some, some functionality into it. Not, not a whole lot. Uh, device nodes are not supported under the POSIX environment. I just remembered that. Um, they support making FIFO queues, but they don't support device nulls. And a surprisingly interesting amount of software breaks if dev null does not exist. I mean, what do you, what do you do with this? This, this is just... I, what, I don't even know what POSIX debug is. Oh, 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 that's, that's, um, there's an energy when you have a comment like that. You know, I'm going to open this in the real editor. No, you can't. Um, how, oh, God, what did they do? Did, did they just... What? <laughs> uh, what is... The... I, I, what is this horror? I can't easily copy and paste this file out. No, well, I mean, they no doubt had the intern implement this feature. Because if they required it for government contracts, they had to have POSIX support, but, um... Wow! That's... That, that's... That's a way to do it. You don't have a debugger. This is printf debugging from hell. I mean, like, literally, they have a POSIX debug function, so you just pull in what you need. Uh, there's a uname function. I don't know what it could possibly return. I mean, it's just... It's glorious. And how incredibly broken it is. And I haven't even shown you how the compiler works. Like, that was a make file tail for building on the Windows side. Um, the compiler is a work of art. Or horror. But here's the big thing that the POSIX environment has. And if you know anything about Windows programming, you'll understand why that is uniquely cursed to see that in an import table. Um, yeah. So the other big thing is that 
the entry point for POSIX applications is PDX initialize uh, data. This is glares. Fork, um, fork is implemented as an NT kernel system call because the NT kernel actually does support fork. You just can't access it through the Win32 subsystem. It's only there for the POSIX environment. And it doesn't have any of the performance penalties that Sig, uh, Cygwin... Uh, yes, so the compiler is a daemon. Um, I should show you how the compiler works. I, I should show you how the compiler works, but why am I doing this to another human being? Uh, let me remember what binaries I'm going to need. I think I just need CC. I think I have all the other ones. Yeah, I do. So let me grab, and I also, I actually will also need a R and uh, I probably am going to need LD, although strangely enough, that was not compiled. Yeah, okay, so we need CC. Okay, so let's grab CC. Uh, we need AR. And uh, I need LD. Alright, so let me grab these. Uh, okay, so, and I'm also going to need dev server, which is not built by default, but let me, let's, let's grab these and let's go throw these in the resource kit. Alright, so, CC. Goes there. AR. Goes there. And uh, LD was the other one I needed. Okay. Now we also need dev server. And I should tell you, it took me about three days to figure out how this works. Um, right now, we're literally getting the footage for an end commander in real time video. All right, so we need this one. And, ah, uh, flip. What did it. Undefined structure. Oh, why are you, why are you complaining about this? I feel like I should have actually used an older compiler. Like, please don't be obnoxious to fix. You, oh yeah, you know this is an internal tool when you see shit like this in the headers. Like, you know, Windows NT internal source. This is what they shipped. All right, so uh, when, okay, it's line 58. All right, five, eight. And this should, I'm just gonna not say anything. I'm just going to highlight this and I want people to look at what this is and I want chat to kind of scream. Yes. Yeah. Because that's how it works. All right, so I think I can just define this as stat. I don't think there's actually a reason why I can't besides the, uh, the that. Okay. Yes, so the way this works is that, um, well, let, let me see if I can get it to build because we, we do actually need this. We need this dev server. Hoping that's. Buffer uses undefined structure stat. Was it okay? Apparently, that's all I needed. Okay, and I'm going to just note for the record. Uh. 
that dev server is a Windows application. It's not a POSIX application. Oh boy. Um, Petro, FIOs do not work between POSIX and Windows applications. And now I'm going to show you true horror and I'm going to need a new I'm going to need a new window for this uh, so let's go into the POSIX environment uh, NT res kit POSIX okay uh, CC did I not copy him here I thought I copied him here uh, CC.exe is CC CDRE AR and LDEXE is LD so if I run CC, I get commands like this. So it looks like a normal C compiler. Uh, don't believe it. So let me make a hello world. So, hello world. Oh, well, I didn't spell that right. So if I type it just like this, oh, I, I swear I can type. So, So I type it just like that, it will never actually return. But I'm going to show you something really fascinating here. I, I had this was not fun to figure out. If I open this temp directory, I believe it's going to be in this one. Yes. If I open this temp directory, you notice I have this file called dev sim, and uh, I actually am going to have to open it under the pos. Actually, if I open it with dev plus plus, it'll show up correctly. No plus plus plus. What does that look like to people? Like, doesn't that look a whole lot like, oh, I don't know, um, a compiler command line? Because that's how this works. It literally writes a file in this folder. The daemon dev server reads for this file, compiles it, and then returns it. It is the most cursed thing I have seen in a long time. And I'm going to show you exactly exactly how this works. They literally did RPC by file. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to describe it. Uh, I have to make a slight change to the environment before we can use it because I forgot about that. Um, dev server wait, runs every five seconds. Uh, I have to change uh it, it the i either have to change dev server i have to rename a file and it's easier just to rename the file um cl exe cl free six exe cp cl exe Okay, cool. All right, so now I minimize this. So this is going to be our dev server window. So if I type CL386 here, we have a compiler. Cool. Uh, and now, where did, I don't remember where I, did, um, we go to POSIX source, dev server. And you just notice that CL just got invoked, and then this just finished. Oh yeah, how did it, how did it save that? 
Oh yeah, I didn't actually compile it. It just linked it. Uh... Yes, and every time I do that... Oh, it can't open input file. Um... Shit, I actually do remember this problem, and it was annoying to fix. I actually, I actually had to patch the source code to fix this. I, I remember this now. Which shows you how much this actually got used in practice. Um, because this was, dev server was obviously built for like a very early version of Windows. Because look, I mean, look at this. That is literally Microsoft source code paths hard coded in there. Um, but it, it pulls in the wrong libraries to do this. Like if I look. It's actually CC that pulls in the wrong libraries because that's where it's all ran out. If I go up CC here, uh, where does it generate it? Yeah, because I, I remember I had to patch this to make it work. Let's see. Yeah, here's the default libraries, and if I open the make file in another directory, and hopefully it doesn't close the other one, because this has the things that we need in it. I think I can just remove that file, though. I don't think it's actually needed. Uh, PSX libs. Let's see here. All right, open up directory is it in here no that's just a bunch of other stuff make i guess it'd be uh posix lib yeah see that direct file doesn't exist so i think all i did to make this actually work was i went into posix c I'm hoping chat is properly horrified by this because I was pretty horrified about this when I first found it. I think all, that's all I actually had to do. Uh, Plastic source. CC. I might have had to like copy one or two files around. Like it's possible. I don't really remember off the top of my head, but I don't think I had to do more than this. So if we go to CC and make it. Oh yeah, hold on. Save. And make. Alright, so copy cc.exe uh, to nt res kit POSIX cc oh wrong command like that so now let's run dev server and let's see if that works Can't open input file uh, that. So what am I doing wrong here? Um, like I remember having to do this. I just don't remember exactly what I had to do. And also there is some samples here, but I never really looked to see what they do. Uh, they do include a make file though. Is there anything useful in this make file? Probably not, but probably worth looking at uh yeah so here's all the stuff they do psx libs i think if we just need these three libraries or maybe the library path isn't set properly yeah okay i vaguely remember this actually being the problem i think it's a path problem that I don't really want to go through the trouble to fix correctly. Yes, and you don't, that was the problem. You don't need nt.dll, you just delete it. Uh, and I have to make that double slashes or it will not work correctly. This is not the way to fix it, but 
I don't care. I really don't. Okay. Because this is a completely insane way to have solved this problem. I don't know... Like, like... I don't know what compelled Microsoft to do this. Like, someone at Microsoft obviously cared about making this at least partially usable. Cannot open file. Okay, did I miss a... Yeah, I did miss a slash. Okay, no problem. Like that. We're almost there to having it work. We're almost there. Can't open lib.c. Did I screw Do I not have the header set correctly for this? Do I... What gives? No, that's correct. That's correct. So where's libc? Uh... Which is actually a really good question. I don't remember. Um, I think we need... I think it's somewhere else. I think it's here in the lib folder uh, that libc is in. But I'm not certain about that. Like, I, I remember going through pain to make this work. Uh, like, was it something like MS libc that got this all to work in the end? Like, hold on. I, I took notes on this. Why am I trying to recreate this from memory? Uh, so let's take a look at the subsystem notes. Yeah, something is definitely passing the wrong command line. Um, well, it... It could also be being imported by other things. Um, I cannot open file libc. Because this shows the command line it's trying to generate. So it passes that in, it passes that in, and it passes that in. So, hold on. If I go to cc... I just run nmake. What, what command line does it send when it tries to do this build? Um, so it, it links these three libraries, and that's fine. Uh, library path is okay. Let's see here. MS Tools Lib Pop. Uh, what I need is imports. Oh, wow. That was a bad idea to run headers on that file. Okay. I'm just going to have to wait until that finishes. And it is screen tearing just as bad here than not. Because um, import libraries can have imports, so this may be where it's coming in. Okay, so where, what are, what does this actually want as an import? No, that looks fine. Did I forget it? No, I've got the slash slash there. I got that taken care of. There's an easier, we can just see exactly what command it's using. As long as dev server isn't running, it will just spin. Because this is how I debugged it originally the first time I did this. Because uh, figuring out, there is no documentation for this. 
Like, if there is, I never found it. But it doesn't seem to exist. Yeah, so that's all valid. Change current working directory, link, subsystem, MS tools. No, I, does it need no default? It, it might need no default. Might actually be what it needs. Hold on. Um, because this definitely expects an older version of the compiler. Um, they actually have an example file. Let's see here, hold on. Classic source. Uh, let's see here. Examples. Okay, so that doesn't actually work. Uh, CC. No default lib needs to be there. Okay, that that's actually what's missing. So that's probably so where's it said in subsystem? Right about here. So that means we just need a line that's Wow, I, I can't seem to type right now. I know far too much about how the Microsoft compiler works. I should not. No, no one should know how to understand this. All right, now we control C here. Like you can tell that this was like coded once a very long time ago and then never updated. All right, let's see if that does it. I think that worked. Hello. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So yes, it can be done with a make a standard make file, or you can try and get that blasted CC binary to do something. I mean, it took me what three and a half hours to get this working, and I've already done this before. So I kind of want to do something s stupid with this. Um, if we take a look at the browser. If we take a look at browser, the my browser tab. Uh, and you know, I actually do want to be in studio mode. So, I tried to get configure scripts working, and um, we're missing a lot of commands. Like, we don't have a copy of sed, uh, which is something we would definitely need. Uh, we're missing a lot of uh, like I was able to build sed, but um. There's just not a lot you can do with this. Like we have CL, hello world test. Um, oh yeah, you know, I actually documented exactly how it works here. I had completely different problems because path is hard. But yeah, so I did manage to build a copy of GNU said, but I like, I'd probably have to get the better part of core utilities working. My thought process at this point is if I was really determined to get a, um, I kind of want to see if we can get rogue working because it wasn't defined as a required command in POSIX.1. You just needed the C library. You can compile your own. Like I do think it would be possible to compile enough binaries 
that you could run configure like i actually got it far enough that it started doing checks like this and then it died farther because of missing utilities yeah um yeah the POSIX specification version that they were using was ancient like i do think it would be possible to do something useful i but i think i kind of want to see if we can build rogue like because rogue would be an interesting attempt and maybe we would even you know at a later point we could even try and get a configure script going because if we could get a configure script going you could build a fair bit of software although there's so little like this is i would say this is probably equivalent to a b a very early bsd maybe even bsd2 um amiga unix is a lot is is an actual unix this is just bits um the problem is that 4.4 .4 core utilities would not be trivial to compile yeah i don't do i even have a make like i don't think i have like a true make command like or maybe we have posix make uh yeah we don't have an no wait maybe we do have an actual make command on posix source did it build this it didn't build this but we can build it ourselves so we do have a make command and that's the bsd make command um so there is that so we could potentially try and build like say rogue um let me grab let me see if i can find a copy of bsd rogue um let's see here rogue source code original rogue source code it has a configure script though let me see if I can find an older version of it. Uh, like, that's a DAWs port of it. I'm looking for it. Rogue Archive. I think I'm looking for 3.6. From BSD, from Usenex. Use next. I think this is what we want. Because this is a very, very old version. Um, and there's also a copy here from the PDP 11. Let me grab, let's grab these and let's just take a brief look. All right. Uh, Rogue. Because Rogue 5.2 would be 1982. Actually, let me, let me switch windows here. Oh, actually, I'm on the right window. Um, I'm feeling a little bit optimistic that we could get one of these to build. Like, if we were to go here, because this says it's from PDP 11. Right, let me go desktop. Because this says this is from the PDP 11. And uh, open VS Code. Wow, this just keeps opening on the wrong screen. I mean, it might actually build. Well, maybe not because look at that. Look at the hard coding in there. It's possible we could get this to build, though. Like, I'm not completely completely afraid of it we'll have to make modifications but i think we could make it build all right let me figure out how we're going to get the source code in there 
Well, hold on. Let, let's take a look. The thing is that while we probably don't have the, the headers, we probably have enough of the functions. Like, what was in TTY characters? Like, we could probably just rip it out of something. There's no reason why I don't think we can. Uh, TTY characters. Like, I want the actual file. So what was in this? So basically, it's just a handful of functions relating to term cap stuff. And it's a structure. It literally is a structure. So the question is, does this exist somewhere? Or was this a BSD only specific include? Which really could be either or at this point. Um, it would definitely be possible to get that to work. It would just be effort. Let's see what we have as far as POSIX headers. Like, I'd like to do something useful with this. Uh, we have term IO, so we, we have term cap. Like, we do have an actual port of term cap. Yeah, nothing amazingly useful. I don't think I actually have that header file. Um, so what could I... Well, hold on. What do I have in the sys folder? Maybe I have something useful there. No, I don't have anything useful there. Yeah, the capitalization on these header files are definitely... Well, the file... The, the, the source code gets compiled on the Win32 side, so it's case insensitive. Okay, so maybe we can't build Rogue. No, uh, H, it's not all case, it's not all capitals. Look, l look at what we have for cursed files in our home directory. Like, that's perfectly normal computing on Win32. That, 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 you know, that's completely normal computing in Win32. And yes, those are in fact distinct files. So, okay, so we actually would not actually be able to build Rogue in this environment. Uh, unless we made some code changes to it, which I'm not averse to doing, but that's going to be kind of an effort. Like, we would have to modify Rogue to run with term cap. Um, uh, Chad, anyone got any good ideas on what we could try? Like, I don't think NetHack uses term cap, but I could be wrong about that. Let me, let me think about this, because there's got to be something we could build that we could we could actually manage. Like, let me look for the BSD games folder. Um, here, because BSD games used to have a lot of neat source code in it. Especially if we can find an old version of it. Uh, BSD games. Like, we could probably get Adventure to build. Like, here's the list of BSD games. So, we have, uh, Cribbage, uh, a whole bunch of these. Like, there's Trek, uh, right here. There's the original Hack, uh, Tetris BSD. Um, let, me see if I, let me see if I can find a download of these. Let's see here. BSD, BSD Games Download. And I really want the original source code, not like modernized source code. Uh, moves to SourceForge. I really like, would like the very original game. 
Uh, I, you know, I, I should have thought about this before starting the stream up. I really should have. Actually, this, this, I think, works. Um, so switching back here. So this is basically uh, what looks like a port of most of them. Like, we have Adventure. <clears throat> and we do have some Makefile fragments. This all looks like this is from NetBSD. Uh, hopefully there's no auto calm. Oh, there is. Please be like something. This might... This might actually be okay. I mean, maybe let's let's just try it and see how far we get. All right, so let me let me get this transferred over, which is going to require a little bit of creativity on my part. Uh, okay. Tar creates BSD games dot tar BSD games. I'm just in a Windows terminal, so bear with me. Okay, so um, actually, hold on. I need to do one more thing. So, let me just switch to desktop view so you can see what I'm doing. So, one thing we do have is we have the PAX utility. It's actually standard on Windows NT. Uh, I just need to remember how you do this. I think you'd have to do V7. What was the name of it? Format. Uh, dash, it's dash H POSX is what I need. then I should be able to extract that on the Windows side um, with Internet Explorer. That's the hope anyway. All right, so Internet Explorer. Wrong IP address. Going a bit slow. All right, so now we want to grab the BSD games tar pile. Wait for that to download. No, BSD, when IE doesn't do tar, but we have a copy of packs, which can decompress this. Okay. Assuming it downloads it. Wow, I forgot how bad this, there we go, save file. And then, oh, I don't want to put there, there. And let me make a new source folder called source. So while that downloads, I'm going to just step away for a moment.
And I'm back. All right. Whew. There are days. Okay, cool. So let's grab that. Let's grab that. So given that we have packs, we should be able to do, I think it's packs like this, BSD Games Tar. Yes, and now this is going to extract. Although I forgot that there's a Git folder in there, so that's going to take a moment. OB case sensitive only affects Win32 applications. So I am deeply curious at how much we can compile. Although look how slow terminal handling is. Like that's impressively slow. So I also like kind of want to find out in the future if it would or would not be possible to run any of these on like MIPS or such. Like, I'm not sure which games I want to try and build, but I mean, look how the one of the big problems is that terminal speed has never been good on Windows, but that is exceptionally bad. Like, I, I don't know. Like, when I tried to get Configure Script working, if we really wanted to try and do something useful with the POSIX environment, I'd probably have to build like half a dozen BSD user land components, and I'd end up probably with something very, very broken. So, I can't imagine it would all be usable, but who knows. Um,. And obviously, BSD Games is assuming I have probably a less bare-bones core system. Um, we probably can get Adventure and maybe Trek to work, but... And Hunt the Wampus is probably doable. Like, we'll try for a few of these. I mean, I understand why they didn't do case sensitivity on Windows, and I understand why they didn't do it on CPM. Uh, it was really for compatibility with DAWs, because you can, technically speaking, have case sensitivity in a fat file system. It's not specifically impossible with the way the data structures are handled, and there's some indications that that was actually planned for at some point. Uh, does extract faster if I put something in front of the window? I could try. I shouldn't have done a, uh, a dash V. Actually, it does look like it's extracting faster now that it doesn't have to redraw the whole thing. That's really stupid. That's like exceptionally stupid. Okay. I mean... It's kind of just part of the course for this, though. Uh, let me build make while we're here. Because we're going to need make. Oh, right. Um, we don't have lib32. Uh, I just gotta rename some binaries. Um, which one does it need? Let's see, a link. I think I just need to make, yeah, I think, what's it mean? Do I have a lib command? I don't remember. Yeah, I do have lib. I just have to put it in the, uh, I just have to make a copy of it. Microsoft, Microsoft. Source, make, and make, and make. Okay, is that build now? Yeah, that does build. So it does give us a BSD make command. I don't know how good it is. 
Alright, so MS, um, res kit, POSX, make. Uh, did it success? Did it actually build something? Yeah, we did get. Oh, it's NT. Okay, cool. So if we go into BSD games now. Oh, did it not extract? I think it didn't extract because I gave it the wrong options. I think it's just that. Yeah, okay, I screwed up. It didn't actually extract. It just listed every file in the archive. Uh, because PAX is weird like that. Oh, boy. Weird, weird, weird software is weird. I do, at some point, want to actually get my Amiga 4000 out. Um, maybe we'll try running NetBSD on it at some point. Could be interesting. Now we need to wait for this to actually extract. Like, this was something else I noticed when I was testing the POSIX environment, is that it was very slow. Obviously, it's not optimized, but, I mean, this is pushing what I'd call, like, the whole thing is not usable. It's like, it's not fit for purpose. You realistically could not use this to port any software to or from a Unix-based system. Unless it was a very simplistic application, you'd be better off porting it to the Win32 command line interface, which is basically what everyone did. Um, at which point, though, you'd have to make incompatible changes because of missing things like fork and so forth and so on. Uh, yeah. It, I mean. It's still better than when I was trying to do this under NT3.1, which just would have very random and very strange console errors. I really regret not picking up a 5150 when I had the chance at BCF. Not that I know what I would do if it, I mean, I have a compact portable. It's effectively the same thing. Uh, honestly, I should do something with the portable on a stream. Like, I really should. I mean, I got one of my, um, I still, I got one of my starts in Linux, uh, distribution development, working on the Motorola 680 EXO port. I, I, my, my, the way I got my foot in the door was the port wasn't super active and I needed another Debian developer to sponsor my application. So I basically figured out how to run Debian inside Amaran which was an Atari emulator, which happened to be able to support the MMU. So we could emulate an Atari, it would have been a 1040 with the MMU that was much faster and had much more memory than real hardware. And that's how we used to build Debian for Motorola 68,000. Uh, um, although, it, it would, while I say it was faster, I shouldn't say it was fast. Like. OpenOffice.org had about a month-long build time, and it kind of progressively went downhill from there. Oh, wow. A 5155. I would love... God, those are amazing to type on. I, I've got a Pentium, uh, a no-name Pentium. It needs a little bit of work, but I would, like, completely trade that for a 5155 just for that keyboard. I don't remember if the uh, Hume emulation is actually up to snuff. Last time I looked at it, it was just cold fire and it wasn't the full uh, ISA, but it is possible that it has been changed in the intervening ages. I mean, we had a build failure with OpenOffice.org. It wasn't a build failure, it was a runtime failure. And the full build time on it was about a, a week on ARM if not longer. It was probably one of the more miserable things I had to work on at Canonical because at the time we were trying to really make Ubuntu on ARM be a thing and it was a pretty sucky experience. We were essentially building Ubuntu on what could best be described as cell phone processors. Um, 
very anemic cell phone processors. In an era where it was already standard for a build development system to have four to eight gigs of memory, like that was not an unreasonable ask in 2009, 2010. And the ARM systems had uh, 256 megabytes of memory. Like that, that was like basically abusing a page file. Like really abusing a page file in ways that should never be abused uh swap memory is an amazing thing that leads to certain powers that are considered unnatural that's that was really my takeaway from that entire experience is this actually extracting or am i losing my mind like did i do this wrong or is this just really that slow Yeah, no, it's actually, it's, oh, wait, 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 wait. I remember how you do it. I, I, I did this wrong. It's packs are like that because it's such a stupid, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. It's really, really stupid syntax. Yeah, so we basically just sat there waiting for it to do things. Why is it doing things? Uh, it's, it's having problems with this, isn't it? Is it, like, actually not... Is it extracting anything? Or is it just making a bunch of empty folders? No, it's actually extracting stuff. I just don't know... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to kind of roll with this. Uh, if it's got problems, I'm going to... I'll repack it. Yeah, I mean, we got an early star on this one. I don't know how far I'm going to take this one today because there isn't a lot I can do with the subs, uh, the the subsystem stuff. Because right now, I think my current plan is what? Where are we? We're just coming up on the four hour mark. I'd like to build something with it. Maybe, maybe we'll even actually install MIPS. Although I really wasn't planning on doing that today. So we got BSD games. So I am curious if we could just run the configure script in here. Uh, you have to do it sh configure. This is a very oh boy. Why is it saying memory fault? Uh, sh.exe configure. When in doubt, uh, okay, so source BSD games. Well, we're already seeing things like p test is missing, printf is missing. Uh, I don't know what it's actually doing, but it does seem to be trying to configure. I have this distinct feeling it's just going to die horribly, but let's see if it's actually is it actually doing something. I have the distinct feeling it's not actually doing anything. And see, you can see here that the actual POSIX binaries are running. They all show up as POSIX. Uh, well, they show up as POSIX and then they actually show up as themselves. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we're missing a little bit too much of the shell to actually do stuff. Okay, so printf not being there, we just have to control C it every time it comes up. Our grep command is a little bit too old. Our grep command is ancient. I'm just going to keep hitting control C until it does something. I think it's asking me questions and I can't actually see them. Like... If I type make at this point, do I does it do anything? Uh make set make path to run make. Which make? 
Uh, okay, so make path is NT res kit postix make export make path make memory fault. You know, it wasn't doing memory faults when I tried this under BSD, but okay, hold on. Uh, let me try make here. All right, maybe that shell's just broken. Like, let me just close out that one entirely. Uh, source, BSD games, adventure, make. Okay, make path. Uh, okay, hold on. NT res kit, POSIX, make. Export make path. Okay then, all right, let's see if we can build it by hand. I mean, it looks simple enough. I mean, I think we just have to build setup and then, all right, well, let's try that. Let's see if we can build Colossal Cave. So if I try like say CC uh how do I build setup.lo hide game clean files setup I guess CC setup.c setup Right, this code's been updated to use GCC. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna let that, I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm really not gonna let that stop me. <sighs> yeah, well, you know, I could try that. You know, that's actually a good thing to try. So make path, NT res kit, POSX export make path make and it still crashes I don't that may be a problem with NT4 I like I said the first time I tried this we have these attributes yeah so that needs to go away so like where it says attribute unused these need to get removed so maybe we can maybe we can actually build this. It just has to be done by hand. Uh, so cc setup c setup, and we just gotta keep an eye over here. Undefined ran symbol random. Oh wow, we don't have a random. Wow, we don't actually have a random function. Uh... Wow, I didn't actually realize random wasn't part of POSIX. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to end up doing. God, th th this isn't right. Um, Well, it did build that time. 
So I think if I run setup. I don't know if that's doing anything. Uh, wow, that actually exited out of the shell entirely. Yeah, I don't think... Oh, well, maybe it did do something. Set up... Yeah, because I do have a data.c. Yeah, I do actually have data.c. So, maybe that... Type make file BSD uh, cat. Like if I do make fragment, does that tell me? No, that doesn't help tell me anything useful. Make file BSD. So cc main.c int.c done.c save.c sub r.c. I don't know why I'm typing these all out by hand because I probably shouldn't. io.c data.c crc.c uh, out adventure oh and it it dies not being able to find a header file so i'm just going to do something i shouldn't do like who's going to know the difference okay apparently this is going to know the difference uh, and then data it says unexpected end of file all right let's try something different because i don't think we're going to get that one to build i mean we probably could but let's try like track i mean this looks simple enough yeah it's literally just a whole bunch of source files Let me just try it like this. NT, um, NT ResKit POSIX. No, that's actually not where it would go. Hold on, hold on. I actually know, um, it would be POSIX source. POSIX, uh, POSIX source, uh, MK rules. Yeah, okay. I remember this now. It's the... There's additional components here that this needs that probably are not there. Um... I need to make... I need to rename some files. MK rules, MK rules. MK rules... MV sys and but it's still memory faults which I think is a problem with NT4 it was not doing that beforehand but okay all right that's fine uh, let's see if we can build track. Because this looks simple enough. I mean, the, it's literally just that. So, like, if I just grab all these source files, just kind of like that. Don't mind me. And 
and I do something like that, what happens? Now it's it's still complaining that that file cannot be found. So, okay, fine, fine, hold on, hold on. We can make that file. Let me open a new terminal. Uh, POSIX, uh, po POSIX subsystem is case sensitive on NT. So let me just go sys and then let's just make an empty file. Uh, cdef, okay, hold on. Touch cdefs.h. Let's just, just, you know, kind of, let's just kind of try this again. Uh, so CC. Oh, damn it. I will say that using the terminal on this is not what I call fun. Uh, not plastic source, BSD games. Rec. Nope, that's, um, uh, yeah, that's completely broken. That is entirely and completely broken. Like if I had period correct source code, I could probably make this work. And the error changed because it, it sees the file, but honestly, this is not gonna be super simple. Like, you, I don't see how you could pretend, like, I knew that this entire thing was, like, a joke to begin with. Let me think about this. Uh, there are copies of the BSD 4.4 source code online. Like, it, it, it was widely distributed. Let me see if I can find an archival version of it. I, I want to give this the quote unquote best chance it could possibly have. So let me let me grab this and put it in and let me bring the browser tab back up. So my guess is that uh let's see our studio mode. Sorry. So my general guess is that Microsoft had to have been grabbing source code from one of the BSDs. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. And these are very old versions of the BSD games. Like, th this is even older than what they were using beforehand. Um, and you can see you have things like uh, include this. It handles all this recursively. So if we go to the games directory and then we go to, like, make file here... We have this here. It's much simpler. And like its make file is drastically simple. Like drastically better, I'd say. Like does this even have random? Because that was not part. Yes, yeah, so this one uses random. But if we were to go to like hack. This might like see if we look here hack is just all c source code and some defines i just don't understand why make doesn't work um because we kind of am 
going to need a working make command for this. Like, it's going to really suck without one. Um, but it's not undoable. Let me let me see what make is actually complaining about. Like, if we type make and I type make here, it needs make path to run. Uh, sources, no op. Like, is this doing the same sort of broken source code thing to not? Because this should not be using GCC to build. If, let's, let's take a look here. Like, if I go here to setup. Yeah, see, there's no attribute line here, so this was not being built with GCC. Hey! Um, yeah, uh, uh. Carhide. Wow, holy cow. I, my brain just completely quit on me. Yeah, we're trying to do useful things with the Postix sub environment. We have it working for definitions of the words working. Let me see what this make path thing it wants is. Uh, make path BSD make. I don't think it matters like i i don't get it kari okay i i, I apologize it's it's early slash late for me um so let me switch back to the vm let's take a quick look at the source code to this because microsoft shipped it let's, let's use it like is there anything here that helps at all at understanding this? Because I, I am actually curious if like an actual period correct code from BSD might, I do stress the words, might have been usable. Because it doesn't seem like it, but I could be wrong. So let me see here. What is make path? Get environment make path. Built in rules uh, first. POSIX source. None of memory. So it basically looks for a whole bunch of files and directories and then probably breaks catastrophically. Because you're not actually, apparently, I don't think you're actually supposed to use make like they include it, but they don't, Microsoft never actually uses it. What they give you are these example make files, like if we open this one up, that use, um, that, well, actually, that's not what I thought it was. Like, that would be this one here, I think is what I'm looking for, that use nmake. Uh, if it will open sometime today. Okay, I guess maybe they're not using nmake for that. That's interesting. If I was, can I compile these? Like, let me see if this make, if our make is working at all. Because I have this distinct, distinct feeling um, this make is completely broken. And again, I feel like this is a problem with bit rot in Windows NT. rule like let me see here um make path equal pdd blah 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 export make path examples memory fault Because I thought I got the make command to work when I was testing this in my own research, but it's entirely possible I didn't. Let's see here. Like, make path. Yeah, set make path needs to be run. And then, yeah, it just kind of falls over catastrophically. 
So I wonder if it's easier just to modify one of the Microsoft Make files to do something viable. Because, I mean, that's how they're building all this. Like, if we open this one up in Notepad++, and you can see how this is just a Microsoft um, Make file. So, I feel like if we're going to try this, this is the way to do it, and we use nmake, it's probably going to be a lot less infuriating. So, yeah, let's go for it. Let me let me get the BSD source code checked out locally. Um, yeah, let me get this all checked out locally. Because uh, apparently at this point we're going to need it. Uh, and honestly, that's like something I didn't think I'd ever say, but here we are. Um, Alright. So, git clone switch to the desktop view just so we can see what's going on. Copy that all down. No, I tried it. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I would have to probably reinstall Windows NT 3.1 and see if it does the same thing. Oh, this is gonna take a bit to check out. Okay, not a problem. Absolutely not a problem. All right. Because I do want to end this on a high note. I'm not sure what we're gonna try and build. I, I kind of like the idea of going for hack, but I don't know if we have enough of an API to actually do it. Um. So, like, on one hand, I think we've proven that this was a complete and total pile of garbage. Um, I could potentially use WinDebug. I don't even know how a POSIX application would show up. Like, I really don't. Oh, you know what? I just realized my, my face cam has been turned off. Uh, well, it's at least turned off on desktop view. Let me turn it back on. There we go. Still waiting for this to check out because that's a lot of little tiny files. And let me make this bigger. Uh, there we go. Just need to wait for it to go. Things I didn't expect to be checking out today. The BSD 4.4 source code. And I will make whatever binaries we successfully compile available. Uh, assuming they work as a Patreon perk. And I'll probably just throw it up on GitHub. Um, but we'll see. I don't know how much longer I've got as far as awake and useful consciousness. And... The current plan at this point is I'm going to probably write a very quick and dirty script. I will record a voiceover and then I will either edit it myself or I'll probably do an initial edit myself and then we'll figure out what else we do and don't need footage for. And hopefully, I'm hoping we can get one more video out by December. That is kind of the fingers crossed sort of uh, hope here. Okay. Still definitely waiting for things to check out. Taking it sweet, sweet time. Okay. Hmm. Um, I, it, it's currently 1024 AM here. I started streaming at six in the morning. So we're just coming up on four and a half hours on air. Um, but I've been up all night. I'm at the end of my day. Yeah. Um, yeah, fortune might be doable. Like I feel like adventure hack and Trek would all be doable. Trek, um, I know was in V7 Unix. It can't be using anything um thing uh the entire implementation is garbage like 
my personal professional opinion, if I was ever to be asked that, is that the POSIX subsystem is unfit for purpose. Um, but I do find it interesting trying to use it for something, because as far as I can tell, no one has documented it. Like, I found one post of someone who managed to build hello.exe, but it was missing a lot of the doc, like a lot of the steps. Like that's where I figured out I needed to get the resource kit, and by and large, no one has said how bad this is. Um, yeah, I mean the entire purpose was to get government contracts. It was probably also insurance that if they really needed more support for Unix APIs, it could be added to windows relatively straightforward which was basically what services for unix was uh in windows 2000 and later uh because windows 2000 basically replaced not 2000 xp uh it was available for 2000 but it shipped really with xp replaced the original POSIX environment with services for unix um the su the os2 subsystem is actually very complete i've actually used it before works great um it's got a few catches but you can run 16-bit os2 applications with basically no downside on it i i think i have a very old twitter thread where i looked into it and uh maybe we'll do that as a live stream to be perfectly honest all right so now that we've got that extracted oh man that just made a mess of this folder didn't it uh, no, it didn't. Okay, so user game, uh, user source games. All right, so let me do h postix Try, let's try this a second time. Okay, so now we uh, move games. Is this in the right place? Yes, that is in the right place. So now we get the web server running again. Cool. All right. Now let's switch the view. Uh, Engine Explorer. Alright, so BSD 4.4 games. Save this file. Save. And now we just let that download. Yes, there was Presentation Manager for NT351 and 4.0. Um. Yeah. So. There is that. Um, I'm I like. I feel like I kind of do want to follow up and try and explore subsystem for Unix. Like I tried it back in the day, but that's probably a later stream. I, the only follow up I could see doing to this is trying to run it on a MIPS platform, because uh, the MIPS platform can be emulated. Um. Okay, so let me go down to source. <clears throat> Excuse me. Packs are BSD4 underscore games dot tar. And now we just have to, you know, kind of wait a bit. Um, I mean, WSL1 basically works like the POS6 environment does today. Just not that different. Um... Oof. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, WSL1 basically connects when... It, it's basically uh, an ELF loader and the kernel system call API. It's very similar to how branded zones for Linux 
ran on Solaris uh, and had about all the same compatibility issues. Although Microsoft did a very solid port from what I saw of WSL1. I understand why they decided to just basically run the Linux kernel in a VM and call it good, but it's a little depressing. Yeah, no, I'm definitely at the end of my day, but I want to end this on a high note, even if this is not going to be a long stream. All right, so let's let's go back to the source folder. Um, let's fi let's figure out what we could actually realistically build. I am tempted to try and do hack. Like it's probably a really stupid idea because it's a complicated game so maybe we'll try that second let me try let's try adventure at this point no adventure needs ran so let's not do that one uh let's do track because i suspect track will be one of the easier ones so let's just open up its make file and we basically just have this list of source files. So if we grab this, and then we have this set of make files. All right, so let's look at this. Um, Because this is basically how it builds all this. Well, I forgot how really horrible the make stuff is. I wonder if I could just if we can just do something like like could I just it it, it can't be. It, maybe it would be that simple? I don't know. Well, let me go track cc It's possible. I mean, it is compiling. Look at that. It is actually compiling it. Did that not, did that actually work? Okay, I think something must have failed, but that looked like I got most of the files. Cannot open uh, sgetty. All right, so that almost actually compiled let me let's see if we can figure out if we can fi fix this uh rp yeah okay i think we can i think we can just comment this out this looks like this is all dealing with break commands. I don't think we actually care. Like, I'm actually pretty sure we don't care. Like, that's probably not the right way to do this. Yep, it's the POS... This is the POSIX subsystem on Windows NT. It's how Microsoft basically cheated to get government contracts. Like, I I don't know if I should say cheated because technically speaking, they met the requirements as set out by the company by the federal government. But I wouldn't call this usable. All right, let's see if that actually does anything. Let's see if that errors out. Yeah, it looks like that might have actually built. Uh, 
Uh, unresolved external symbol. Okay, so it obviously wants... Did I, like, miss a file when I copy and pasted this? Abandon, check out. Check out. Okay, so apparently there are some, like, files here that did not get called. So, check out dot C like that. that and then attack it's like is there an attack file and there is an attack.c it is there but maybe there it was an a bit, uh, unresolved problem like is it just not is it trying to link that in no not really it's possible that the command line's too long. That actually could be entirely. Oh, maybe I missed the first line. Yeah, okay, maybe I missed the first line when I copy and pasted it. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I think we might actually get this to compile. No, okay, so that did a that it did actually like skip that first line because I just saw it go by. Yeah, see, it, it's like it's not parsing that. Let me just try this. There might be like a limit to how long this command line can be. Which, you know, would be basically par the course. Condition. Probably I'm going to have to get make working. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's what it boils down to. But let's just see. to copy and paste that all over again i think i'm going to uh let me, can i just can i just make the i think i i think i need to I'm not gonna lie this is kind of annoying all right let let me see what i can do about this let me grab this make file and you know what we're just going we're just going to make this the way it's supposed to be made. Uh, see that object is like that. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna basically have to make one of these per each one of these. Abandoned, abandoned dot C. So that's the only way I can see actually possibly getting this to compile. Uh... Yeah, this is gonna suck. All right, uh, you know, let's just let's just get it over with and deal with it. Uh, 
capture. Yeah, okay, so capture object, capture C, check out object. I know there's a way you can do this with macro completion, but I don't really trust the compiler. And I don't remember the syntax to do it with the old M makes. So I feel like this is just the faster, less miserable way to do it. to do we're going to uh, I'm really worried that this is going to be a too long of a command line for this to work but I don't see what else I can do here.c damage uh damaged you know if we're going to hold on maybe we should do this with a simpler file I'm just kind of mentally thinking if there's an easier way to do this off the top of my head not really seeing it. I mean, there are ways I could probably do this with GCC. Um, just, just to humor me. Just to humor me right now. I'm just curious. If I do... If I do this... Just curious. Find in files dot C dot object. Find next. wonder if this works. And then we just grab all that like that. Like, this is probably not going to work, but if it does, at least I, it'll be easier. Sorry if I'm not talking much. I just, I do need to be able to focus just long enough to get this to work. So, all right, if I save like that, because I don't really care about the original. And, oh, I don't know. Let's, we could do a control C here. Source. Uh, Trek, enemy. Syntax missing on line 37. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine.
Well, it's compiling something. Are you kidding? Is this is this actually going to work? It is actually compiling it. Uh, it doesn't know how to make one of the files. Oh, okay, it's missing a space. Hold on, that that's an easy fix. Uh, I need to move this to a different folder. So, move track caustic source. Got to rebuild that. Because I think this is going to need to link against that one library. Yeah, it's missing a space, but that was promising because they didn't actually die of a build failure anywhere along the way. I don't know what to make of this. I mean, Trek is a very old game. I have no idea how you play it. Uh, it did link. Like, that actually did link. Holy! Uh, I have no idea how to play this, but it is working. Um, visual. I think this is actually working. Undock. And Sulu's telling me that we're not docked. Okay, so let me move. Uh, north. Okay, you know what? I'm going to say that's successful. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but it works. Uh, how do I self destruct? Let me run destruct. Working. Oh, look. I think it's going to blow up. Yep, the ship's going to blow up. Okay, the Enterprise got destroyed. Congratulations, we have successfully used the POSIX environment for something completely useless. Let's try something. Let's see if we can build something else. I, I'm actually... That was... I'm not going to say that was painless. But that was kind of cool. To actually see this building something. That was kind of cool. Let me see. Let's see here. Do we have Rogue? I don't think ro let's try hack. Let's see if we can build hack. I'm not optimistic we'd be able to do hack. But let's just see. Let let us see if we can do hack. I mean that that was almost unmodified source code from 4.4 BSD, which probably is the most anyone's ever tried to build with this. So let me grab the make file for track.
Uh, so let me grab make file. And then, actually, I don't want to grab that make file. I just want to have it open. So make file. Yeah. All right, so let's grab all that. Yeah, I feel like I kind of doomed myself because I now have proven that you can actually do something with this. Uh, which probably will surprise like the people at Microsoft that watch my content because uh, that actually happened. Like, Raymond Chen, who has commented on one of my videos on his blog, which was like, oh, neat, but also, oh, God, I just spent a lot of time talking about his blog post. Um, I suspect we're not going to be able to get hack to build because it's probably missing, like, some graphical stuff, but let's try. So we grab all of that. So now we grab hack. Let's go to its make file. That's a lot of files that right there. Grab all of that. Actually, before we do all that, uh, search and replace. Dot C. Dot object. Um. It's not quite perfect on this one because I we have to we're gonna have to make this file by hand, but it shouldn't be too bad. At least I don't think it will be. Alright, I think the easier way to do this is we go to the bottom like this. Yeah, you know what? This is way easier. Actually, you know, this might build because this is a term cap program. So maybe it will. All right, so, all right, so let me grab hack.exe like that. Now let's just see if we can build the base. Like, we're going to have to build make defines. And actually, uh, let me do that. Like, here, this is how we do this. Uh, we do make defines dot exe, which is formed by make defines dot object. And then we just do this and that and then uh this i'm going to run manually okay which window do we want to do this in hack so let me try and make defines uh, illegal character and macro at 16. Probably tells me I got something wrong, but now I gotta find where in this very, very, very long line I, uh, I didn't delete something. Which is a little concerning because I'm not seeing something. Uh, it's possible the line is too long. Legal character in macro. I don't remember if you can do this in 
and make. You might be able to. Let's see what it says now. Legal character in macro. Oh, I just realized... No, okay, I am full screen. And make... No, that's the right make file. Yeah. Oh, maybe... Nope, chat was right. That is the wrong... That was the wrong one. And make... Okay. All right, separator missing. Cool. So chat was right. I'm probably too tired to be doing this. Make defs. Uh, well, okay. Definitely going closer to the right direction. Okay, so make definitions did actually build. Like we got an actual binary out of that. So, okay, so we do have make defs, uh, def objects, pack o names dot h, which seems to work. Yeah, that's actual source code. Like, you know, if this had not been a completely half-baked, that's actually... That's actually building. Okay, hold on. Hack, obj, mid... Uh, is this something we have to make the defines on? Probably. Uh, okay, hold on. And make hack dot. And make hack dot exe. Okay, so it's object mid. It doesn't know how to make. Object mid. Probably because I'm probably merging two files together. Yeah, this this probably needs a space. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, we probably need to look at the original make file just to see how it goes because. Obviously, I butchered something. I mean, it's going the right way here. Probably... Okay, so... So we have hack.object. Okay, so it's hack.command. Ah, I see. It's hack command dot object like that. We just lost a letter somewhere. Okay. Easy enough. I mean, it's just bizarre seeing Unix source code being compiled with Visual C++. Like... That is weird. It's building, though. Like, that is legit building. Alright, so what died here? Unidentified... Uh... Oh... <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, okay, that that's gonna need some source fixes. Uh, it's thinking we have a far pointer. Uh, yeah, let me let me just do a search replace. Far, uh, far one one, something like that. It doesn't need much. I just it's it's a it's a keyword collision. It's not using far pointers. It's just uh the the terms collided. Or at least I really hope that's what all that happened. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so can't open... We, we saw this one before. Uh... I think we have term I.O. Like, I'm almost certain we have term I.O. Well, we have term... Uh, maybe we don't? Yeah, we may not be able to do this one. Because it looks like we, we have term cap, but it looks like we don't have all of term cap. Uh, let's take a look here. Like if I look here in BSD PSX, is there anything... Yeah, I probably because it's using screen drawing primitives. I don't think we're going to be able to use this one, but now about a lot of effort. But let me just take a look at the headers and make sure of that. Let's see here. Include. Um. Uh, you know, what do we have to work with here? I mean, we have a handful of functions, but... Let me see. Hold on. Which functions do we, do we have these in any shape, manner, or form? Because it looks like we do, or might have. We have on, off, and a few of the other ones. But I don't th think... No, this doesn't look promising. Set IO controls. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do something cheeky here, which probably I shouldn't. Let me see if we can get away with doing this. Let me let me undefine this file. Let me just maybe maybe we can get away with this. I'm not. I don't think so for sure, but. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing tried. Like, because Vi was able to do screen capabilities. Yeah, missing identifier. 
what does it what happens if I just throw out all the IO controls like because these are not going to do anything like there's no possible way that's gonna work I mean, maybe, but I, I doubt it. I really doubt it. It. All right. So it's doing eat. It's doing end. <sighs> okay. So that's an undefined struct. I just got to get rid of that line. I will say that this is bizarrely interesting on how far we've managed to take this. All right, so where are we? So we're down. It's interesting that we like kind of peaked at three in the morning at 190 and it's dropped off, but I guess people have gone and had lives. Um, it is cold out today, but who knows? I guess watching a, a, a several hour stream of people compiling can be repetitive. I feel like it's gone farther now because it's building the monster file. Uh, can't open signal on pager. Okay. That one should be easy because like, we shouldn't have to do anything. So hack uh pager. All right, so get rid of this entire function. And then it should have the signal function call, but let me just see how far we get without it. Actually, that did that build? Yeah, that actually did build. So let's just keep trying. Let's just keep trying. Uh, with a two eighty six with one megabyte of RAM, you're not you're not going to be able to run Presentation Manager on that. Presentation Manager realistically needs three or four. You might be able to like run one dot one. The command line version OS2 1.0 would probably run, although there's not a lot you could do with it. All right, it's well, it's going, it's trying. It's real. It really is taking a shot at building this. It's kind of I didn't think like net hack would be viable or well hack. Okay, so there's a few symbols missing, but I think. So sig quit. Uh, all right. So these signals are not, we can't do anything with. And then DFL also can't do anything with. Yeah, and then I see broken. Yeah, I, I already see it's going to have a lot of broken, but I don't know. Let's, let's just see. At this point, I've come far enough that I'm kind of curious. I mean, for one megabyte, you could probably run netware on it if you've got a network card uh, and you want to do something kind of cursed with it. Like, I'm a little surprised that this doesn't even have enough support to run Rogue. Which I suppose makes sense because POSIX was really designed to handle the very old school world where, um... Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Handle a very old school world where uh, it was still using teletypes. Like, I don't even think POSIX was designed to handle glass terminals as a standard feature. Um, for a lot of reasons. Because mainframes at the time would have probably been like one of those things that um would have had issues like i i almost wonder if rogue would run better at this point because it, obviously it looks like net hack is or i should say hack because it would be that did become net hack and this is using term libs so Alright, yeah, let's try Rogue, because that was kind of what I wanted to go for originally. I don't know if it's realistically feasible, but I'm game. Okay, replace the files. I think after this, I'm probably going to call it, unless anyone has any really cursed and good ideas of what to do with this beyond this point okay so this becomes rogue Okay, there's our object list. And I guess we see if anything works. I I suspect this is not going to even get as far as the other one did, but we'll try. All oh, right, and then Classic source, rogue. Yeah, I like. It's so limited, you can like bit do nothing with it. But I think that's enough to make a video on at least. All right, so let's see a rogue, and then we just gotta get rid of this second half. So let's try. Because. I, I guess they had to do enough for Vi, although I don't know why they would go for that much trouble. Yeah, can't include curses. Um, like, there's definitely ways you could take it further. But, yeah, term doesn't have curses. Because, um, yeah, here's term cap. But no term. So you'd basically be limited to anything that was... How do I put this? You'd basically be limited to anything that was a command line application that would run on a teletype. And did not print anything. Did not do any networking. Um, And that's about it. I mean, you could do advanced drawing if you gave it the NT terminal commands. But I don't even think you could get Bash to build with this, to be perfectly honest. Because I made a go at running a configure script on this the first time I went through it. And, like, here, I'll give you an idea of how little to nothing there is there's no dev there's no dev null that breaks pretty much all bash 
uh, all bash scripting. You can't run, you can't run configure without dev null. Now you can cheat, but it doesn't really work. I mean, you could maybe run like a bulletin board service. Like if you use the Windows NT Telnet daemon, because the one advantage you do have, which we did see with track, because that was like the one thing we got to build. Yeah, see, since we got track to build, we can look at uh, headers track.exe. Uh, more, please. You could distribute this as a single binary by itself because it doesn't depend on anything like Sigwin or such. And Sigwin was not a thing in this time period. Sigwin had its first release. I want to say it was 97 was the first Sigwin. So there's that. The thing is that you can't access any of the NT services or the Win32 API because the POSIX API is completely separate from the rest of the system. There's actually a diagram. You know, there is a diagram in the book that explains this. Um, uh, let me pull the browser back up because I believe I do have it in my notes. Um... So if we look through, because these are the f notes that I took originally, and there was a diagram in the book that explained this very well, but I guess I didn't copy and paste it in. Like, oh yeah, this was something I always really wanted to figure out. I found this in the POSTIX specification. During the process of developing the POSTIX, cell, uh, uh, POSTIX uh, standard, the working group sought to find problems in which the standard, in a manner that was both fun and which would publicize the standard. The contest is described in the rationale, seed weird necks. The prize of publication were the names of the winners. Our special thanks to Paul uh, Gutrertz, Winner in the most serious category, and Michael Gerstein, winner in the most demented category. Which you have to wonder what you'd send to a standards group to get that sort of response. I mean, pretty much that is what I'm going to describe it as, is an extremely, extremely limited... Um, Unix. I would say this is probably on par with Unix v7. Like, looking through my notes, you can see me trying to get this to work properly on NT31. It seemed more stable on 31, but I don't know if that was just whatnot. Like, I, I went through a lot of pain to just get it to do very simple, very basic things. I even have to do a little bit of patching here. Uh, mostly just to see how it handled things like dot profile. And then this was trying to run a configure script. You can see it just basically all falls apart. And then reverse engineering how the dev serve basically went. Um... Like, they do include in the readme files for this, and it is in here, that they basically lifted all this source code directly from ABSD. I don't know which one they lifted it from, uh, but if I go up to NT Res Kit, it's in the readme. I mean... It is actually possible that Microsoft had actual license with um, 
actually had a license from University of Berkeley to just include the source code. Because right here it talks about, yeah, copyright 1998 to 1990, uh, University of California. Um, and Microsoft did use their original TCP IP stack. Actually, one of the things I do want to do in a future stream is try and use the original streams 3.1 network style uh, stuff for that. So, by and large, they probably, like, if we, um, do we have DBX? Uh, what, what the hell is that? DBH? Maybe we don't need it. Like, if we go to MS Tools Lib, uh, no, POSIX Lib, because now you can see the import libraries in here, and I do dump bin exports libc posix h that is not the window i need to be in i need to be in this window uh ms tools posix lib dump bin exports libc posix lib more like here we can see the function oh that wasn't the functions um What would be the dump bin? It would be it, it would be symbols, I think. Symbols libc posix lib. Uh, yeah, that's the correct command, but that's a little bit too much output. Right. So when you do symbols, you can see like the stuff they support. Like here's is upper. Uh, and more. Is punctuation is debug basically just like a lot of random stuff that looks like it's straight out of the I mean actually you can see it right here uh, PSX and I'm betting those because Microsoft never stripped out the source file names from these things so like I wouldn't be surprised if this was literally the C library from um, one of the BSDs, like, like ISC type, like these files look familiar to me. Oh, wrong scene. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. Let's let's take a look here. So if I run, so dump dump bin can grab stuff like uh, symbols. So if I run it on the C library, they generate. Like, here you can see is alpha, and the file it's defined in right here is C type uh, underscore C type dot C. And like, this looks like the files that I'm used to seeing in BSDs. Like, if we keep going down, like right here, you've got another. Um, floating point to string uh, because it's part of the symbol table. I wonder if we Google for that file like we would... Well, I don't know if I want to Google for it because it might show up leaked source code and uh, that gets YouTube mad at me. But these file names very much look like they came straight from BSD source code. Like you here have here A to float, which is ASCII to float. There's the symbol. So it looks like they basically just entirely ripped off probably one of the later BSDs. One that wouldn't have had AT&T code in it. Like, I can't imagine them paying a license to AT&T. Um, so maybe it was a f maybe it was 386 BSD before the schism. I mean, they could have implemented all from scratch. I just, I can't imagine them doing it. Like, mblim is definitely a file from the original BSDs. Like, these all look familiar. Oh, there's one I know. That that one I actually do know is in the BSDs. Stir to t, uh, to t, uh, string to decimal. That was the function that broke on AIX. 
Like that was the actual function that broke on AIX and I had to spend a lot of time debugging that. It's possible it was in Xenix, but Xenix would have been AT&T Unix and not BSD, which means that Microsoft would have either had to have some sort of license that would let them distribute it freely, or they would have had to pay royalties to AT&T. Which I just can't see them doing. Like, I can't see Microsoft being willing to spend royalties to AT&T. But this looks like this is directly ripped out of Unix. Like, someone else can look this up for me. I'm not going to do it on stream. It's also entirely possible they re-implemented it from scratch. Because this basically defines everything that's in the C library. All 110 functions. Yes. Um, I mean, some of these I'm pretty sure weren't. Like, that definitely looks like it would have been a .s file, and that's definitely like a platform specific thing Microsoft did, but it could just be something they linked in. So it's kind of interesting how this all evolved because. What happened after this is Internix basically created um, a usable version of the POSIX subsystem, and that was subsystem for Unix. Uh, and then past that point, then we got Windows subsystem for Linux. SCO sued um, IBM for breach of contract over... AIX. Uh, that's a very long and rather strange story. A copy of the Project Monterey and AIX for Itanium has actually surfaced. There's an entire channel in my Discord talking about it at this point. I'm just seeing if there's anything else here that kind of jumps out at me as this was ripped off from the BSDs. Um... And parts of it just look very familiar to me. <sighs> yeah, I'm not surprised that they reused their own code for a lot of this because Microsoft did... Microsoft's own C library does have a lot of functions that are available in Unix. Why reinvent the wheel? But if, you've, if you're if you already going to use code from the BSDs and they have, they have the copyright notice right there, like, why not be lazy about it? There's nothing... There's nothing against it. Microsoft Legal had already signed off on it. I mean, without seeing the actual source code, it's impossible to know for sure. I kind of would like to summarize the Grok Law stuff. I mean, that was a lot of where I learned a lot about copyright and such. Like, that was amazing to see that firsthand. And the fact that Project Monterey not only surfaced, but we've actually got it running. Well, Tenox got it running. And then here, you know, I'll, I'm just gonna pull it up. Let me just pull it up. This is some of the stuff that I've been doing as off stream stuff. But this is my wiki, the Re Restless Systems. And we've literally gotten AIX on Itanium working. Uh, we found the hardware it works on. Um, it works on the very early Merced systems. It works on the HP i2000. And we even managed to... Well, I wasn't involved with this aside from just some tips. Um, we... Tenox and a few other folks managed to actually um, build GCC for what was essentially an unreleased operating system and then port a whole bunch of software to it. Um, AIX on a Mac actually is not as hard as you think. It really would just require some of the rights of drivers and probably write a what's called an XCOF bootloader. Um, but it would actually be doable. I mean, that's how it works in emulation. 
it really would just need a stub loader that could load um, AAX's first stage loader because Apple's open firmware doesn't have everything you need. Uh, there, there are the Apple network servers that did run AIX, but they don't run Mac OS. They're really just rebadged RS 6000s from what I've seen of them. Like, I wouldn't even call them Macs. They're just RS 6000s with an Apple badge on them. And we've had a few other things that we've been working on on the wiki. I, I, we're going to just kind of get to the point of wrapping this up soon. Because um, we've been going for five and a half hours. I'm pretty much fried and I am kind of okay with where we are but like uh, some of the folks in the discord um, Europa decided to build GCC 8 on an Ultra 5 running a modern version of OpenBSD and it took six days literally took six days and someone has gotten a PDP 11 uh Actually, an actual PDP-11 is currently being live-streamed in my Discord. Uh, it's on day 12 of uptime. So, uh, there, the, the, there's that. And I am planning on, like, doing a little award ceremony for this, which I call the Wall of Pain. Seeing how much pain people are willing to subject themselves for. So, uh, there's that. Um... Like, I'm going to throw this back to chat. Does anyone have any good ideas or any questions about this? Because I think we're at the point we could wrap this up. Um, sorry. Welcome to the Wall of Pain. Welcome to the Wall of Pain. Um, you know what the solution is? Just cross-compile the Linux kernel from AUX. It might be fin it might be done by December because all you have to do is build a cross compiler. What is in UTS name dot H? Okay, you know that's a good question. Let's go find out what's in UTS name dot H. Uh, yes, but you want to know something? I'm hosting it for charity. Uh, I'm not doing it for this stream because this was a very unplanned stream, and I like my charity streams to have a higher quality to them. Although this one actually came out pretty well. Um. But I intend to do the awards ceremony as a fundraiser for Trevor Project. We have a goal to raise five grand for Trevor Project before the year is out. We are, we are just, I believe we are now over 10 grand raised for charity this year alone. Uh, and we are just under $2,000 out of $5,000 raised for Trevor Project at this point. Um, yes, um, Desert Bus for Hope is a thing. Like that, that is, th this is the vintage computer version of Desert Ho uh, Desert Bus for Hope. Because I, I, when, when the Dobbs decision came down and uh, Kari knows this, but I never commented on it publicly. I wanted to host an event where we were going to do like a Doom multiplayer match. But the logistics of it was just a little bit too complicated, and it I was going through some life stuff at that time. I mean, I still am, but it's a lot better. But I've always been determined to try... I mean, it very much helps... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of the things that help me with doing content creation is the amount of impact I can do to make people's lives better. Wow, there is basically nothing in this file. It defines UTS name structure, but I don't know if there's anything defined in it. Like, you have half of you name, but not the other half. Yes. Um, I, I, we don't have a you name command. I, I, I will note that there is no actual, like, you name command. So, I don't even know what this identifies as. Yeah. I will say just seeing an SH on Windows NT4 is cursed. You might be able to implement a uname. You probably only have like half the ABI. I mean, th this is just pain. 
and someone's dog is just going at it outside. I don't know. Uh, Postix environment does not support. Okay, let me, I'm going. I'm going to re show you from uh from the manual. Uh, I mean, because I could pull. We could literally check out the book from um Internet Archive. What was that? Alright. Uh yeah, let me let me just show you what the limitations are. Yes, so the it only supports strictly conforming POSIX1 applications. So basically you have exactly 110 system calls. Um let's see here, where was it? Yes. Printing is not supported, but you can redirect to um, a printer via pipes. Network access is not supported. Uh, you cannot access the Win32 subsystem. You can't access memory map files, networking, graphics, or dynamic data exchange. Um, frame buffer, there's not enough API to run NeoFetch. Because I don't think you could run Bash with this little API. Uh, it, here, here's, it actually shows exactly what is supported. Um, POSIX 0, which is just a guide, is not supported. POSIX 1 uh, is supported. And then everything else past this point, such as... Uh, oh, that was not what I wanted to click on. So POSIX 1 is the only thing it supports. So POSIX 2 is the shell and tools, not, not supported. Testing and verification is not supported. Real time and threads, not supported. Ada language bindings, not supported. System security, nope. System administrator, not on your life. Networking is a nope. Fortran is a nope. Supercomputing application environmental profile. I've never actually even heard of this one. POSIX 10, nope. Transactional processing um, application environment pro um, profile is a nope. And POSIX 12, which I assume is Motif, is also a nope. Uh, I do not want to try and run PowerShell Core on NT4 because then I'd have to port .NET. Yeah. Now, to give you an idea of how much better OS2 is, this explains what OS2 uh, subsystem supports. OS2 supports subsystem communications. You have name pipes. All land manager functionality of name pipes on OS2 binaries works. Anomalous pipes work. Shared memory works. Semaphores work. Queues work. Signals work. All of OS2 stuff works. So OS2 binaries are better supported on Windows NT than, um, than POSIX. Yes, actually right here. The OS2 subsystems implement some of the land manager IP, uh, API, implement, implements NetBIOS version two and three, name pipes and mail slots. It also maintains remote drive compatibility of OS2 and any OS2 application can use remote drives. UNC naming is supported, something that was not actually supported on real OS2. Like, um, this was literally for government contracts. This was literally for government contracts. And just showing you how much, like, I, I here's my comment at the time. OS2 BBS is, but it's secretly Windows and, oh God, I just had a live stream idea. I, I just had a live stream idea. Ah. Uh... Communication with other subprocess. Communication between OS2 and NT processes can be done through name pipes, mail slots, NetBIOS, files, and comm devices. The reason that the OS2 subsystem is so complex is that Windows NT Server was Microsoft's upgrade path from Land Manager Server, and Land Manager Server binaries will run on Windows NT. Like, I know that from experience. I tried it. Um, but... If you want to see the horror, I really do recommend cracking open the book on this one. It's actually, I left a link to the book right here. Um, 
And apparently I don't even need to check it out because I left it right on the right page. Like, this talks about Postix compatibility. Oh, no, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't want to piss off the Internet Archive by renting a book on stream, but um, if you want to read it, I will just... I will just... Yeah, that... There you go. For the folks who want to see it for themselves. I mean, this is... Like, I, I just like, this chapter is not intended as a POSX tutorial. So was there anything else in my early notes that were... Oh yeah, this was me dealing with broken windows. Uh, curse computing is what we do here. There's a reason why there's a channel for that in my Discord. I mean, literally... Uh, this was something I hugely appreciated. The most serious and most demented. Yes. Um, you know, I just imagine someone at Internet Archive wondering why so many people are suddenly trying to check out this one book on the resource guide. Like, I found some really neat things about this that MFC was not supported on Windows NT for MIPS, but you could compile it if you wanted to. Like, it was... Properly cursed. Let's see here. And this was the other thing I was pointing out. Um, because I looked this up earlier. Um, I showed how there's a bit for the POSIX subsystem. That's POSIX CUI and 7. But there's also an OS2 subsystem for the PE specification. Which I couldn't figure out what could possibly use that. Because... Actual OS2 never used a 32-bit interface. It was the command line applications were all 16-bit. It was just this really weird hacky thing they never fixed. So I guess this is probably a very old holdover from when it was NT OS2. Um, NJ Road fan, that exists. MFC for Macintosh is in fact a thing, and I have it. Uh, it's called the Cross Development Edition, or uh, Visual C++ Cross Ad Development Edition for Windows NT. You know what? I'm just going to get the disc and I'm going to show it. I literally do have this. It should be sitting right here on my desk. Where did I put it? Uh, I did have it. Hold on. It was here? Oh, there it is. I see it. I see it. I put it on the other table. Yes. Yes. It is, in fact, real. And let me make sure I'm holding this up in a way everyone can see it. This is Visual C++ format. Uh, th this basically is a port of Win32 and MFC to Macintosh. And maybe we'll do a special stream covering this specifically. Like, because I'd have... The thing is, do you want... You know what makes this really scary is I have two Power Macs. I have a G5. Well, I, I technically... Yeah, no, I have a G5. Uh, actually, no, I have three Power Macs. I have a G5. I have a Macintosh clone, so it's not even a real Mac, yeah, it's a knockoff Mac, although licensed. And I have a Power Macintosh 6100. And there's a reason why that Mac model of Mac is um, unique, because it'll run Copeland. It will, in fact, run Copeland. Uh, it's a Power Star one, it's the same model that Action Retro showed. You know, I've never actually done... I also have a Mac Plus that I have to do Rifa caps on. And um, I have to replace the eject gears. I have the eject gears here somewhere. Like, we could do Copeland on a stream, but I need a power book to run the debugger on. Like, we could actually do a Copeland stream at some point. Oh, 
God. Yeah, that would be so... That was the reason I tracked down that Macintosh. Um, Mainwin has not shown up. I have tried. I, I'm going to just go full screen look, talking to the camera, because at this point, that's just what we're doing. Um, I have asked around looking for it, and it hasn't shown up as of yet. There are apparently a few people that may have it in private collections, but they're sitting on it because uh, it could be traced back to their workplace. Like, I've had one or two people that indicate that they may or may not have it, but I'm not optimistic it's going to get dumped. Um, next Step and Open Step is on the schedule list. We actually did Next Step for Spark on the last public stream. I actually still have the Spark station out next to me because I've been doing testing on it. The next video that... I personally intend to edit not a real-time video is going to be involving next step um, I am waiting for hardware for that video I don't know if it's going when, if and when it's going to show up um, definitely going to be an interesting thing the goal of that one is to run World Wide Web on multiple systems it's not it's not supposed to be a hard video, but every time I've tried to do it, something has gone wrong with the hardware. Uh, at this point, I'm waiting for a PCM CIA network card for my ThinkPad. Um, the Spark Station seems happy enough at the moment, but it still has problems. Because, where is that? I put it. Basically, the problem with the Spark Station was it wasn't running stable. It looked like it had bad memory, but it's proprietary sims. So I did a whole lot of burn-in tests, and it's less bad, but it's not completely solved. So uh, open step next step is on the list. I don't know how that one went or how. And I have a video on Venix I want to do. Those are like the ones that are currently in the queue in the hopper that may or may not happen in the near future. Fingers crossed about all I can say on that one. Yeah, more like this. Um, I am hoping that we're going to have a end commander in real time in December. It's about the only thing that I am semi-willing to commit to. I, I have basically had no free time in the last two weeks. Like, I wrote out a script to try and cover the Venix stuff that I did a year ago that I never actually made a video on. Like, I starred the video and I shelved it for various technical reasons. I probably could get that one done with relatively easy video editing. I don't have the time. Like, I, I ultimately blocked out this morning so I could live stream because I don't want my channel to die and I like live streaming. But, I mean, I, just to give you an idea of what this week has been, I've had to file incorporation stuff, I've had to deal with interviews, I've had to probably send 10,000 words worth of various emails to other parties, I've had to update my LinkedIn, I've had to send my CV out to probably four companies at this point. I will have a block of free time after Thanksgiving, like... We're going to do a charity stream on Thanksgiving. That's going to be the 486, running Windows 98, possibly more. I haven't decided for sure what we're going to do on that one. Um, I might do that one on that Friday and not Thanksgiving as is because I've got a family event. I probably won't get home until 6 p.m. at the earliest, so... That probably will be on that Friday. Um, if not that weekend. I've got to figure out my side of that. I'm running a poll just to see what people are feeling. Uh, this is the Stream Beats library. It's a royalty-free library that can be used for live streaming. Uh, you can find it just by searching Stream Beats. Um... Beyond that, I'm expecting to do more live streams in December, but I don't have 
set topics. I've got to do a lot of archiving work. I've got to get work done on Soylent News, um, which I am going to live stream. Uh, so what I am sort of expecting is we're probably going to have two streams, a w one to two streams a week, which had this week been less of a dumpster fire, I would have gotten a second stream in. Um, yeah, I think going forward, we can probably just expect two streams a week. I might also do some non-tech streams. I would like to do a gaming stream, and I will do a bread stream. The Amiga 4000, I will do at some point. I have to swap out its hard drive, but to swap out that hard drive, I've got to dismantle the entire machine. Like, that... That's a stream... That's a stream of doing stream prep. Like, that... To give you an idea of how obnoxious that is to do. The bread stream... I have to just get the supplies and do it. It's going to be a special occasion. I just don't know when I'm going to do it because, again, this entire week has been... Um... I guess anyone got any questions for me now? I've got an ID to SD card. Uh, I've got an ID to CF card adapter for mine. Um... The largest problem I have with it is... The only way I can hook up AGA to anything is with a composite adapter. So you get incredibly horrible picture out of it. Let's see here. You know what? I'm going to let the stream just kind of run until noon, which will bring us to the six hour mark, which I think is a good stopping point. Um. I unlisted the last Soylent News one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did shave, and I've decided to keep it clean shaven. I just really need a different look. I, um, for those who don't know, and I'll bring this up on YouTube, I do have a second channel that I do things on. Uh, I don't use it very often. It really is just for stuff that is off topic for the main channel. Uh, called Restless Yankee. Um, and I literally biked from New York, from New York City all the way to Boston. I was doing a lot of soul searching based on things that was going on in my life in that time period. Um, thanks. I do need to repaint them. Uh, they are pretty badly chipped. Uh, but I'll deal with that closer to Thanksgiving. I, I don't want to do it just to have to redo it to look nice in public. So, um, yeah, they are chipping a little badly at this point. Yes, um, public safety announcement. If you are over 18, this is a very good time to get um, the most recent COVID booster and the monkeypox one. Just note that monkeypox has a four-week uh, you have to wait four weeks after your last COVID booster. So one thing I, I will add to that one. Yes, thank you. I just decided that it was... I wanted to express myself in such a way. And that's kind of why I did it. There's more on that topic I will say on a later point. But it's not the time for that. But yeah, so this was the work that I was doing on Restless Yankee. Um, and like, this was something that I had happen. I literally had a bike tire explode in my hand. Like, you could see that it was out of the groove, and, um, there might have been obscenities when it exploded. Yeah. Um, that, that, that was a thing that happened. I always meant to do another video on this, but I just never got around to it. Restless Yankee doesn't have enough followers to really justify the amount of time that goes into it. Um, but I really enjoy making Restless Yankee content. So I, I will do it whenever I do travels. Like probably some of my more interesting things will be, you know, life adventure stuff will all be on Restless Yankee. Um, at this point... I think people are kind of signing off for the stream, so I think if you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed this content, consider supporting me on Patreon or Coffee. 
or leaving a super chat here. I am seriously going to be looking at setting up YouTube memberships, although I really dislike the cut YouTube takes. And I will be setting up GitHub sponsors in the near future. Um, I We now do have our own Fetty instance, and it's... Um, we do have our own Fetty instance at this point. Uh, it is, it's still in soft testing, but uh, if you want to send an invite and join, so be it. I think on that note, this has been your host, N Commander, and I, I'm that yeah, wow. Sign outs hard. Anyway, this is your host, N Commander, wishing you all a pleasant day. As always, you know how to support this channel. Until next time, I'm. I, I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.